All right, thank you very much. Okay. Ray, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, this is Lydia Grant. I'm here to do your minutes. Thank you, Lydia. You're welcome. Uh, so today is the 8th, Monday, August 2022. It's about, let's see, 6.02. We're going to go ahead and start the meeting. Uh, we'll call this meeting to order. The Zoom recording is on. If there are any students on the uh, call today and you want some kind of uh, credit for school, uh, please raise your hand so that we can get your name. And uh, so you want to go ahead and call um, roll? Okay, John Barbera. Here. Nick Christensen here. John Demiglio is excused. Dan Dixon. Here. Craig Goldfarb. Here. Cynthia Gagne. Here. Gwen Henry. Present. Melanie Lebrec. Here. Kelly Miller. Here. Alec Norman. I'm here. Thomas Norman. Present. Ray Regalado. Here. Adrienne Nita Reyes Cruz. Here. David Samperio. Here. Angela Sumner. Here. Chris Valle. Here. That makes 15 present and one absent. OK, great. Thank you all for showing up today. Uh, just as a heads up, um, I'm feeling a little under the weather, so I may uh, leave a little early. I have checked in with the executive committee. They're aware Chris will take the meeting over when, if should I choose to leave. Anyway, we'll go on to uh, agenda item number uh, two, and that's general public comment on non-agenda items. Um, public has the opportunity to uh, discuss or talk about items for two minutes. So if there's anyone on the attendee list that would like to talk or one of the board members would like to talk off the, uh, not according to the agenda, please uh, raise your hand. <clears throat> I see one hand up and it looks like it's John. John? I or just want to tell, I just want to let everybody know, <laughs> August 21st of uh, this month, the skate park will open. Um, they just finished one of the last uh, <clears throat> one of the last murals, and uh, they will be. I believe it's the twenty first of either Saturday or Sunday, but it's going to open up then, and that'll be officially the opening date for the skate park. Just let everybody a heads up. Great, thank you, John. Uh, Craig, I see your hand up. Yeah, I would like to announce um, a for, uh, my daughter, a former board member, um, student C, is getting married this September 4th. All right. Awesome Congratulations. Awesome Congratulations. Thank you. Congrats. Thank you. OK. Um, I do not see any other hands up. Uh, two good pieces of news that we got on this agenda item. Congratulations to Craig and, and uh, best of luck to uh, the new family, the additions, Craig. And also good to see that the uh, skate park's gonna open up. So we'll go ahead and move on. Thank you so much. Uh, agenda item number three, uh, so this is so that everyone is well aware, uh, all Northwest San Pedro Neighborhood Council meetings have a new Zoom ID webinar number uh, starting in August this month. So stakeholders should ensure that they use the correct IDs to attend the meeting. Um, so this is more of an announcement, but since this is an agenda item, perhaps maybe we could get comment. And I see a hand up, Victor. <coughs> Um, just to be sure, uh, 
anybody older guys who manually enters these meetings into a calendar um, should be especially wary or aware of using the right Zoom uh, webinar ID. If you if you do that from downloading something from a calendar agenda item, then it or a, a calendar item from like our web page, then it may not be as um, as much of a change. But if you do enter them manually, be especially sure to use the right ID. And if nothing else, uh, you can just go to the calendar on our web page, and you'll have the right ID there. God, I muted myself. The dog was having a conversation with some squirrels outside. Um, thanks, Vic, for all your work that you're doing on this and you've done. This really is appreciated. Uh, not an easy task, I can tell you. Um, I see another hand up, Craig. Yeah. Um, when I went to the email you had sent with the address and use that one, it didn't work. Did you change change the address because I had to go on to the one? that was on the agenda. No, I did not change it, although I noticed a lot of people came in under attendees, so I'm not sure what's going on there. OK. I mean, we may want to check that out. Thank you. OK, uh, hand, Chris, I see your hand up. Yes, I, uh, I went and dug through and I found the emails. And so it was, it was the right meeting ID, but I did, you know, as, as uh, Vic noted, I did come in as, as attendee. So it was the right meeting. I don't know, I've never set up the uh, invitation. So I'm not sure when and where that gets uh, uh, selected, but um, at the very least you can find the right meeting if you go back and dig through email history and use the link. Uh, uh, yeah, I think what Craig was saying is he used that, but had the same problem where he it didn't work. So oh, and I thought, those I, those IDs get set up automatically by Zoom. I have nothing to to do with that. Gotcha. Okay, uh, another hand up, uh, Melanie. Yeah, the big thing that I have to do, like I calendar all the meetings. And so like Vic said, I'm having mine where they're like doubling up. And so I have to take the agenda and match it to the right ID with which one I click on to because they seem to be populating together in my calendar on my Mac. And so trying to unscramble them, the old ones from the new ones. Okay, uh, let's see. Okay, I think that should take care of all our questions. Any comments from the attendees? I see no hands up. So with that said- How do you uh, hear a train? Yeah, it's, uh, there's a train going in front of my house right now. And it also happens to be my, someone's texting me, so. Oh. Okay, let me let me quiet this. Sorry about that, guys. It's okay. I was just that was just odd. I thought that's a weird. Yeah, thing. I usually have it off, and I thought I turned it off. My mistake. Sorry. It probably it, went on by itself. No, I think it's my under the weatherness. So anyway, uh, that goes. That's take care. Of, that takes care of uh, uh, agenda item number three. Shall we go to number four, and that is our homelessness liaison report, Lori Jacobs. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Hope everybody's having a, a good day. So um, updated information as usual. If you see somebody in need out there on the streets, please go to lahop.org portal and put as much information as you can in there. You can be anonymous if you want to. Um, so there a new 988 helpline number nationwide. So it started in the middle of July. It's uh, still uh, a work in progress. California is one of the states a little bit ahead of the game. Um, only about 21 states are really ready for it. So what this is, is this is a new number. Instead of calling 911, if somebody is experiencing a mental health crisis, okay, this is the number you want to call 
You can call for yourself. You can call for somebody else if you have concerns. They have trained operators through the D.D. Hirsch Mental Health Center that are going to triage the callers to figure out what the appropriate service um, they should go to, whether it's uh, suicide prevention or something else. And L.A. County has been increasing the number of mental health professionals to prepare for this. It's hard to know how many calls they're going to get. 911 calls that you call to now, if they are more of a mental health issue and don't require law enforcement, they'll refer that over to 988. And this reduces having police responding to nonviolent situations and allowing people who are really trained in mental health to be the first people to respond. So that frees up the LAPD and hopefully will help people in need quite often uh, somebody having a mental health breakdown, seeing somebody with a gun can be triggering. So we'll watch that. It just launched and um, uh, I'm keeping an eye on that to, to see how it evolves. Um, emergency housing vouchers, um, still a problem. The vouchers have been issued. The county had 600 or 6,806 of those. They have issued most of them, but still having trouble matching them up to landlords. They do have a sunset date and we're gonna lose this opportunity of having these vouchers be um, used. So um, whatever we can do to, to try and get landlords to accept them, there's still incentives going, $2,500 for each unit that somebody opens up. The homeless count results have been delayed. We're supposed to be in July. Now we're not gonna see them until September. So um, very important that we get that data because our resources are based on those numbers. So I will let you know when we get those. Um, uh, I put on, on my report there, a homeless, uh, homelessness and housing hub website, um, very interesting information um, with LA City and LA County put together by Controller Galprin. If you're interested in data, um, there's some great breakdowns on that. Um, eviction and tenant rights, um, still, um, if you receive an eviction notice or you know somebody's in trouble, very important that they contact Stay Housed LA or one of the resources listed on here, also the county, within a few days of receiving that eviction notice so they can get free legal aid. After about five days, it's going to be very difficult for somebody to fight the eviction. And um, with the moratorium being lifted, um, this is critical. Still predictions are kind of dismal on how many more households may become homeless because of this. Um, then I also wanted to mention it's not in this report, but LA City Council last week voted in um, to expand the 4118 ordinance, which prohibits any type of camping or sleeping on the sidewalks, et cetera. Um, within 500 feet of any school or daycare in LA City. And so it's a little bit controversial. Some people think this is a really good action to make it safer for students and, and people walking to the classrooms or to the schools. Other people think that this is not a productive action. It's only moving people around that are experiencing homelessness without really addressing the issue. The important thing is to learn more about this. The CD15 um, election is down to two um, candidates and the CD15 working group on homelessness for the September meeting is trying to arrange a debate between the two candidates specifically on homelessness issues. So if you want to understand more about this 4118 ordinance, um, housing, um, anything else that um, affects the root causes of homelessness, I suggest you consider at the very top of my report and it's posted on our website um, to contact uh, Joelle to get on the distribution uh, list so that you'll know when this virtual meeting will be. Um, uh, everything you can do to be well informed um, when you go to vote and also just to learn more about these ordinances and other actions being taken to address homelessness. That is pretty much my report. If anybody has any questions, I'm here. Okay, uh, looking like there's a couple of hands up here. Um, 
let's uh, start off with the panelists. And let's see, I see Gwen. Gwen, your hand is up. Yes, uh, two questions. Uh, well, I don't know, it's been in the news all day today about funding in order to uh, support uh, people who have pets who would not go into housing uh, and that's including uh, people in abusive relationships, domestic violence situations, unless they can bring their pets. I wondered if you knew more about that. And um, yes, I do. Uh, and then the and then the last bit is, when do you believe that data will come in as to the impacts of forty one eighteen? So to your first question, almost every interim shelter now um, allows for pets. They, most of them have a dog run, uh, and I think it's, it's just dogs. I don't think like you can bring hamsters and, and I don't know about cats, pretty, pretty much dogs have been the support animals that people need. So every interim shelter that I'm aware of um, now allows pets. So that addresses that one. They realize the importance of trying to, if you separate somebody from that, it, it's very traumatic. As far as the data on 4118, again, I think we talked about it last month, I don't know how they're going to track that because, for instance, at the Gulch, when they came in and, and said, okay, we're now enforcing 4118, the signs have been up for a couple of weeks, there were somewhere between 15 to 17 people. At that time, I know two went into interim housing at a bridge home and two went into the um, uh, Salvation Army tiny home village in Harbor City, I mean, in Wilmington. Um, the rest, we don't know where they went. So I'm not sure, Gwen, and I appreciate the question, but how you could possibly track this data when um, you can only track people who did go into shelter. And also some of those people went into shelter and didn't stay in shelter for various reasons. I'm not sure I've answered your question, except I, if you have any ideas on how this can be tracked, Perhaps maybe this should be addressed to your city council member, but I really don't see a, a, a way to do it. Thank you. Chris, you're up. Uh, thanks. Yeah, also in respect to 4118 um, and this uh, 500 foot uh, uh, offset thing, are there any uh, crime statistics that um, quantify the number of crimes committed that would be, I say, I, I suppose, perpetrated by a uh, unhoused person uh, against one of those schools or daycare facilities. This is a solution in search of a problem. I mean, I, I'm wondering where were the, the rash of crimes were that necessitated that, or is it simply the lever that they found to to move that particular rock? Great question, Chris. I don't think it was actually based on criminal activity. It's more of a sanitation and safety. Um, I, I have seen by schools where, you know, you got to push a stroller or walk through piles of trash, use condoms, needles, things that you don't want children to see. However, um, I, and again, I'm not aware of, of really criminal activity. And the new superintendent asked for the city council to do this um, and city council obliged by a vote of 12 to three. Um, the thing is somebody could be 600 feet away, <laughs> but not 500 feet. They just want the immediate area by the school to be clean. But I am not aware of any criminal activity being the driving force behind this. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, David Samperio, you're up. Hi, thank you. No, um, this related, not related, but Barton Hill School has a tunnel that goes underneath from Pacific, one side of Pacific to the other. Uh, my brother and I, um, the, the tunnel was set, dedicated to my mom about six years ago, but um, it was kind of closed recently. Um, there was uh, people living underneath, they, they broke in, they broke the chain fence, they were living in the tunnel. Uh, they literally were building walls down there, like as apartment style. They had furniture, um, all kinds of stuff. So it's literally right there by Barton. It's a tunnel. Um, so even with that, they're going to find a way to do something. I mean, and, and again, it's 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 solving the homeless problem. But in the meantime, 
um, you know, that's not safe. It's not sanitary. They had a lot of things down there. Me and my brother cleaned it all up. Um, I still think it's a good first step um, to do something, uh, but there has to be some, some enforcement. But just wanted to let you know that my brother and I, Barton Hill Pride, uh, uh, we're trying to clean that tunnel up and open it up again, but um, they, they break in, they do a lot of things and it's, and it's just, it's a tough, but it's a tough thing to do um, to solve this homeless problem, but I think we have to do something. And um, I think we're headed in the right direction and it's small steps. And this is, and I do agree with the step uh, with this. Um, I just wanted to share that and say that I do agree that, you know, little steps at a time will, will, will get there. Uh, thank you. Thank you, David. And, and as your homelessness liaison, my role is to just be a messenger. So that's why I said there's um, opinions on both sides. I'm not sharing my opinion because that's not my role here. Um, I certainly have a strong opinion. Um, and the Barton Hill, look at the tunnel the, or the bridge going right into San Pedro. People were up there. Um, so there, there's a lot of... Um, it's a very complex situation and there's some criminal activity with some vagrants. Okay. But yes, we need to, we need to um, make sure that every place is safe and that people um, aren't afraid to walk to a school or any place. Thank you, David. Um, I do not see any more hands up, so we'll go ahead and move on. Oh, right. Yes. Laurie. Was that Lori? Oh wait, I do see a hand now on, on the attendee list. Lori, did you did you say something? Uh, or I said my daughter got engaged too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, congratulations to you too. Thank um, you. On the attendee uh, side, I see Janet Turner. Um, Vic, could you help us out? Somebody else already did. She should be able to speak. Good, Good evening, go. everyone. Uh, Jenna Turner with Congressman Ted Lieu. I, I hope I'm not jumping in too fast. Is it okay to do a government report or should I wait? Uh, we do have a section for uh, elected governmental and public safety representatives on the next agenda item. So Apolo uh, should I just hold, I'll hold off? That, that sounds fair. Thank you, Jenna. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, so, um, well, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and close out the item number four and move on to number five, which is now open for our elected governmental and public safety representatives. So if you all could maybe raise your hand who's attending today and we will uh, move you over and since, uh, uh, let's see, since Janet was so enthusiastic <laughs> and uh, ready to join, so why don't we let Janet go ahead and welcome Janet. We really uh, thank you for joining us today. Well, hello and, and uh, best wishes from Congressman Ted Liu, who is so grateful to everyone on the board for their service to the community. Uh, the role you play is so really important. Uh, and, and he is so grateful to all of you for giving this time and effort. And we know it's a lot of time and effort. Um, Jennifer Harbeck has left uh, to go to grad school. And so uh, we'll be having in September a new field rep for you. Uh, I am the Deputy District Director for Outreach. I uh, am a uh, supervisor for all the field reps. So uh, I wanted to step in. Just wanted to tell you a, a little bit of, you know, uh, promising news. So uh, last year, uh, the Congressman uh, was able to get $11 million for his district, for the constituents in his district. Uh, it was called, it's called Community Project Funding. And so he's, uh, he's trying to do it again this year. Uh, and uh, it's so far it has gone through and been approved in the House. So now we're waiting to see, you know, if it'll go through in the Senate. It did last year. Uh, so just really very briefly, there's in the amount that he's asked for this year um, is $5 million for the South Bay. And that includes uh, $1 million for something called 
uh, providing the pathways to success college and career support. Um, that's going to serve 300 or more teens in the Harbor City area. It's a college uh, bound readiness program. Um, there's a million dollars for the Manhattan Beach Safe uh, Cycling Project to um, fix up that bike path. A uh, million dollars uh, for Torrance Temporary Housing Program. Uh, and a million dollars for um, expanding, it's called the Friendship School Clubs. This is for um, special needs students. It'll help serve close to 2,000 special needs service students. And more on the um, homeless front, <clears throat> there's a $1 million for a mobile crisis response pilot uh, that's having to do with mental health and behavior related calls. <clears throat> Um, 1.5 million for Santa Monica's Behavioral Health Center, uh, 900,000 for St. Joseph Center to do a, a job lab for the unhoused, um, and um, 3.5 million for PATH, who's going to be turning a um, hotel, a motel rather, into permanent supportive housing. Those are just a few of the ones um, that got approved in the, in the House Appropriations Bill. And then only one other little point that we'd like to tell everybody is, please, if you're planning to go to Europe or, or anywhere where a passport is needed, check immediately before you even book your flight. <laughs> um, we are, so many people are, uh, have for, are forgetting to check their passport and trying to get last minute um, appointments. Uh, now it takes uh, uh, up to five, to seven days before your flight. Uh, we used to be able to do it next day. Uh, so, uh, uh, so we ask, please check because most countries insist that your passport has to be good for six months after the date you're planning to return. So, you know, so check that carefully. Please tell your constituents and all the residents in your area um, uh, It'll just save them a lot of heartache and grief uh, if they check the passport and make sure they renew early. So uh, again, next month, I uh, we'll hope to have a new field rep who will be your special field rep, um, but our office is always happy to hear from, from you uh, in any way, shape or form. That's it for me. Thank you, Janet. We really appreciate you being here today. Uh, thank you for the information. Um, okay, I see uh, Sean Kearns. Good evening, neighborhood council members. Thank you for having me this evening. I um, just wanted to provide a quick update on behalf of Congresswoman Nanette Barragan and what's been going on at the U.S. Capitol. Um, August is uh, generally referred to as a district work period of the whole month, uh, but there has been a lot of progress in the right way going on at the Capitol. And so it's gonna be cut up a little different this year. Um, just a few updates here. About a week and a half ago, uh, both the House and Senate passed the Chips and Science Act. And this will bring landmark investments in domestic manufacturing, the production of semiconductors, as well as scientific research right here at home. It's estimated to create about 100,000 manufacturing jobs here in America and accelerate research and development of our next generation technologies, uh, while also preventing funding recipients from expanding manufacturing into countries of concern. Uh, President Biden is expected to sign this into law this week. Um, also, you may have heard uh, over the weekend, uh, particularly Sunday, there was a, a marathon uh, set of votes uh, lasting over 24 hours. Uh, but in the end, the Senate passed the Inflation Reduction Act. The House is expected to pass this legislation without any amendments on Friday. Um, so the Congresswoman is already uh, on Thursday evening going to be headed back to the Capitol for this vote. Um, some of the big line items here is that it will cap seniors out of pocket spending for prescription drugs at $2,000 a month. It will reduce health insurance premiums by $800 for 13 million Americans and it's the largest investment ever in combating climate change. Um, we're going to see uh, funding to create uh, jobs here at home to manufacture solar panels, wind turbines, and electric vehicles. 
It's going to reduce energy costs for Americans uh, through tax incentives and rebate programs. And it's also going to include uh, historic investment in cleaning our ports and advancing the transition to zero emissions uh, based on Congresswoman Barragan's <laughs> Smart Ports Act. Now, this whole bill, because it goes, uh, I think it's over 700 billion, is going to be paid for by establishing a minimum corporate tax. And no American making under $400,000 a year will experience a tax rate increase. Uh, lastly, I just wanted to share that coming up this month is a return of the Congresswoman's senior briefing and health fair. Uh, we had to go on hiatus uh, with this event for a couple years with COVID, uh, but it will be back on Tuesday, August 23rd at the Carson Community Center. Uh, free event with health screenings, lunch, and other resources catered towards our older adult population. And it will be held from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, if you have any questions about the briefing, and of course, any other questions for the Congresswoman's office, our number is 310-831-1799. Uh, but glad to take any questions that folks may have right now. Thank you, Sean. Um, uh, we'll take uh, questions, but I see Gwen's hand up. Gwen, is it specific to one of the people or can we go ahead? We have one more hand up. Uh, and I believe- This is Sean Kearns, but uh, uh, if you want to uh, do the attendee first, feel free. Uh, we do have one more person from uh, representing uh, this uh, agenda item, and I believe it may actually be Octaviano on the phone, but uh, can we uh, yep, promote uh, number 462? He should be able to speak. Hello, 462. Hello. Can you hear me? There you are. Oh, is it my turn? It is your turn. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Octaviano Rios. I'm with the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment. Uh, have a very short uh, update here of items. Uh, so hopefully I'll contribute to your a shorter meeting for tonight. Uh, first off, I wanted to thank uh, all the board members that uh, participated in the department's uh, survey on in-person meeting readiness. Uh, of course, uh, completing a survey like that um, helps the department uh, get a little bit more information as to where each board member is and neighborhood councils are uh, in terms of uh, meeting in person or uh, meeting in a hybrid uh, in-person virtual uh, format for your neighborhood council meetings. Uh, so uh, thank you to those board members that uh, spent uh, 10 to 15 minutes of your busy schedules and busy lives to complete that survey. And we'll circle back to uh, everyone uh, via your emails as to what the results are uh, with regards to that uh, survey, but all uh, the good news is all 99 neighborhood councils participated. Not all board members did, but uh, um, the good news is all, all 99, at least uh, one board member from each neighborhood council uh, shared their feelings and sentiments about, uh, about hybrid and in-person meetings and their readiness for it and their concerns. So thank you for that. Uh, the digital communications policy trainings for neighborhood councils, uh, one took place July 28th, and the next one uh, will take place August 31st from 6.30 to 8 p.m. Uh, we're encouraging all board members to participate uh, and, uh, regarding this policy that's going to take effect October uh, 4th of this year. And the three, uh, the three areas that are going to be covered are the basics of what every neighborhood council should know about using digital channels like social media, um, your uh, social media accounts, websites, and newsletters. Uh, there's going to be a discussion on recommendations and tips for NC administrators that are managing these platforms. And there will be room for questions and sharing about the policy and how it applies and affects you as a board and as a board member. So uh, if you can make time and, and in your NC profiles, there is a link to RSVP uh, to that event. Again, it's August 31st uh, from 6.30 to 8. And that's the last session 
on this, and I believe they're going to be recording it. So if you missed it, um, it will be at our um, website, powerlaid.org/workshops-trainings. Which um, I again encourage all board members, committee members, and stakeholders and prospective board members that may be looking to run um, in, uh, for a seat uh, in the near future to take a look at that website. It has a, a lot of uh, recordings, uh, three uh, which are titled onboarding series modules that were specifically tailored to new board members. So uh, for stakeholders that are, have ever wondered uh, what it what it's like to what roles and responsibilities uh, are uh, encompass uh, serving on a board uh, as a volunteer. Uh, check those uh, modules out and you'll get a good sense of uh, what the roles and responsibilities and experiences for uh, serving on the board. But of, of course, uh, attending uh, committee meetings and board meetings like tonight uh, is definitely a big part of uh, that experience of getting awareness what your neighborhood council and board members do. Uh, last but not least, just a quick reminder, uh, and this is probably going to be the, the last, second to last one, Congress of Neighborhoods uh, is being held virtually Saturday, September 24th, uh, approximately from 9 to, to 2. Uh, we don't have the date, the exact times uh, nailed down just yet, uh, but there is a planning committee uh, made up of volunteers that are coordinating um, all the workshops. Uh, that again will be held uh, virtually. So uh, for more information, go to neighborhoodcongress.la and you'll get a lot of information about uh, not just that committee, but the Congress of Neighborhoods as well. And I won't list all the funding, uh, funding training opportunities, but again, every month, the City Clerk's Neighborhood Council funding uh, program staff host uh, uh, almost on a, on a biweekly basis, some workshops, tailored for your capacity building, as well as for financial officers. So there's some uh, coming up um, later on this month. And last but not least, just a quick reminder that your uh, city attorney, uh, deputy city attorney assigned to you has changed from uh, Steve uh, Houchin to Elise Rudin, who's uh, awesome, very experienced and seasoned uh, Deputy City Attorney has been working with neighborhood councils for quite a bit of time and uh, just very easy uh, to get along with and she's there for board members as in the, if you have a conflict of interest question don't hesitate to email her uh, and of course for the legal liaison who's your chair uh, to reach out on anything uh, that impacts um, the board uh, that relates to a legal matter. So that's Elise Rudin, and I'll send uh, you all her contact information. And that concludes my report, Mr. Chair. Thank you so much. Thank you, Octaviano. Okay, uh, let's, um, if anyone should have a question, I believe Gwen will start you off with your question, and uh, we'll, then we'll go from there. Gwen? Thank you, Sean, for continuing to stay on. Um, it was very exciting to see that uh, uh, Nanette Barragon's office and a lot of your uh, outreach people are already doing events. I, I saw some of the pop-ups that you guys were doing. But uh, in regards to the funding uh, for um, bringing uh, chip, in, chip uh, industry here and manufacturing, and uh, I, I know that some of the funding for uh, EV infrastructure that is for, more for rebates and things like that. But if any uh, any of that is coming to our region, I it would be great to know about that. Um, what what uh, how it might benefit this you know the Bay or uh, the South Bay over here. Um, but also uh, there was a recent LA Times article saying that the DDT issue has increased in uh, scope. That there's been more information. Hopefully, you can touch on that and where that might be. Thank you. Hi, Gwen. Thank you for your questions. Really appreciate that. Um, so, with regard to uh, the funding from Chips and Science Act, I do predict that a significant amount will come to the Los Angeles area as we just have 
uh, the viability for manufacturing to occur here and also the attractiveness of proximity to ports, airport, rail, uh, but none of it is necessarily earmarked right off the bat to come here that I've been aware of. Um, I'll have to read further into it, but I haven't been informed of anything that's going to be guaranteed to come uh, right to our district. Um, and uh, with regard to the DDT dump um, in the San Pedro channel, um, uh, we you know, know that's a, a main priority for a lot of our uh, San Pedro, Long Beach residents and other environmentalists. Um, the Congresswoman uh, did join her fellow legislators in encouraging uh, Governor Newsom to secure additional funding within the California budget that will be dedicated to NOAA and Scripps Institute to further expand their mapping that had began the prior year. And so we think that that should um, assist with better understanding the full extent and magnitude of this issue. Um, it's, you know, it's not an answer that anyone's going to like to hear, but it, it will be a considerable a time before we begin to see the remediation cleanup efforts. Um, my understanding from speaking with folks at EPA and NOAA is that there's still a lot of concern over whether um, uh, moving these tanks um, that are, you know, impacted by uh, DDT waste, even though they may have not carried the DDT waste in themselves, but that it's surrounding uh, this tank dump site, that a remediation effort uh, could further spread the contamination. And so I think that all these possibilities are still going to be researched um, for quite some time. Uh, but it continues to be on the Congresswoman's mind, and she'll be uh, advocating for more funding so that we can progress uh, the studies and when um, uh, a pathway has been uh, determined, the necessary remediation efforts. Um, I also just wanted to back up to uh, the update I provided regarding the Inflation Reduction Act because I, I definitely misspoke uh, on one portion, and that is regarding the uh, caps on seniors out-of-pocket spending for prescription drugs. But just to clarify, that's $2,000 per year. I think I mistakenly said 2,000 per month. So just want to be clear on that part, 2,000 per year. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Um, I see Craig's hand up, Craig. Yeah, this is a question for Octaviano. Um, on anti-bias training, um, what was, why did we have to take it? Was it a requirement to service on the board? And two, are we going to get a second um, installment on it? Octaviano? Do you have to unmute him? No, I think I'm, I, did I successfully unmute myself? Okay, you can hear me. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the question. Um, I, need, I may need to circle back. I know there was a transition to uh, this being um, a voluntary, highly recommended training to um, eventually becoming a required training. I know it's up there on our website as one of the four uh, trainings that, the, our, um, that our board members take. But um, my understanding as of now, only three are required to participate, uh, which is uh, ethics funding and, and the code of, of conduct. And the anti-bias uh, anti training is highly recommended at this point. But let me circle back uh, with the board um, and see where we are. Um, and it, or if, I, if I'm gonna be, be corrected here on that by, by, uh, uh, by our staff, I'll, I'll inquire and consult with our leadership staff. Okay. Yeah, I was also asking about the, it's, this is an installment that was the first installment. I believe there were three. Is there going to be, are there plans to put the other two on? I haven't heard any, uh, thanks for the question. Uh, I haven't uh, heard uh, of uh, others coming on yet. Uh, as, as of now, I've only, I only know of this one, um, whether it's going to develop into uh, a more robust uh, training program. Uh, I'm not sure. I haven't heard. I haven't heard that specifically. But uh, maybe I'll get that answer to to see if there's any anything in the horizon with regards to that to that training. Thank you. Thank you, 
Craig for the question. Um, I do not see any other hands up uh, on the panelist side or, or the attendee side. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and close this agenda item. Thank you very much uh, to all who gave uh, reports. Uh, we really truly appreciate them. It's always good to stay and be informed. So with that, let's go over to our next agenda item, which is the consent calendar. And we have uh, five items on the consent calendar. Uh, uh, item A is to approve the uh, July 11th uh, board and stakeholder meeting minutes. Uh, that also item B is to approve committee and liaison um, appointments and modify standing rules accordingly. And uh, item C is to approve the president's appointment of an ad hoc planning committee for the Peck Park incident. Uh, for a community forum. Uh, you, you can see there that the, uh, the ad hoc committee will be comprised of Melanie, uh, John Barbera, Dan Dixon, Angela Sumner, um, Chris Bay, and uh, Kelly Miller. The next item will be item D, remove Tom Mater, I hope I said that right, from Environment and Sustainability Committee. And finally, to extend the board vacancy application deadline to September 1st for bylaw for uh, this is out of bylaws and, and elections. Uh, we're having an issue or a question about boundaries. Uh, so um, that's the reason for that. So uh, unless I hear differently, can I get a motion for all five? Uh, okay, I see I'm Craig's pulling, hand up. I'm pulling B and C. You are pulling out uh, B, the uh, uh, committee appointments, and also the appointments for the Peck Park, okay? Um, Gwen, did I see your hand move? Uh, so move, yeah, motion. Okay. Motion, okay, for A. There's uh, no motion, I just pull it. No, no, I, okay. I, I hear what you're They're saying, pulled. but okay. I'm think, I think I'm hearing a motion for the others to be passed, if that's okay. Uh, a, it's out of committee, so you don't have to. It's, so um, you don't have to make a motion. Any discussion on those? Three, no. So let's go ahead and take up uh, a uh, roll call vote. Okay, these. This is to vote on a consent D. calendar A, D, and E only. Right. John Barbera. Yes. The Christensen, I. Dan Dixon. Yes. Craig Goldfarb. Craig Goldfarb. You're muted, Craig. <laughs> come back to Craig. Okay, I'll come back. Cynthia Gagne. Yes. Gwen Henry. Hi. Melanie Lebrec. Yes. Kelly Miller. Yes. Alec Norman. Yes. Thomas Norman. Yes. Ray Regalado. Yes. Adrian Ida Reyes Cruz. Yes. David Samperio. Yes. Angela Sumner. Yes. Chris Valle. Yes. Craig Goldfarb. Yes. Okay, it is unanimous at uh, 16 or 15 eyes. Okay, so let's take uh, uh, next one. Let's take B and uh, Craig. Did you have a concern? Do you want to talk about that for B approval of committee? And uh, I have I didn't see a list for it, and I wanted to see a list of it. I believe and I had looked at it a, a couple days ago. And I had list was in the agenda packet. I, like I said, I looked a couple days ago and I hadn't seen it. So I wanted to check. In fact, that's what I was trying to do when we were when you were doing it to see if I can find an agenda packet. It, it is there and it's on it's on the it's online so, right now. I mean it's being shown. And uh, so tradition usually when things are taken out of the thing, 
out of a uh, consent calendar, it goes to the end of the agenda. Well, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and try see if we can get this thing taken care of. Do you, do you have a problem with that? Are you looking at it now? No, I haven't been able to see it. So I'm asking you to put it to the end of the agenda so I can look it over. It's, it's been there. It um, has been posted let, longer than two days. Yes, it has. I've seen it. So I, I agree. It has been posted. Uh, I, I made a request. If you don't want to do it, you don't have to do it. Even though traditionally the items that are on the consent calendar go to the end of the end of the end of the um, agenda that are taken off, you can do whatever you want, which you always do, Ray. Um, Craig, I'm going to ask that any you, these kind of comments, you can just keep them to yourself. It does do nothing at all for our meetings for any of these type of comments that are going on. Okay, I don't I think that, that was inappropriate. So let's not do that again. I would truly appreciate it. You're not my father. Uh, well, I, I, you're definitely you're, you know, you may be acting like a kid when you do that. So just don't do it, Craig. Okay, thank you. Oh man. So for Craig's benefit, we'll take it at the end of the uh, agenda. Um, and uh, so that we don't have to go through this again, we'll do also C for the end of the, uh, to the agenda for Craig's benefit. Uh, so um, we will um, move on to uh, agenda item number seven. Chris, there's a hand. hand. Is there a hand up? I'm sorry, I missed it. Okay, sorry, Chris. Go ahead. I'd just like to remind all the board members and attendees that you, uh, the, the procedure is to raise your hand and wait to be recognized by the chair before making a comment, verbal or otherwise. And uh, that rule is should be uh, adhered to as strongly as any of you. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Um, my, my intent was to stay as long as the um, consent calendar and uh, I am feeling very much under the weather. So what I'd like to do, uh, 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 Chris, with your approval, would you like to take over the rest of the meeting? Because uh, I'm going to go and uh, get some Tylenol and uh, see if I can uh, get rid of this uh, headache. So um, if, if it's okay with you, I'm going to drop off and um, have a nice rest of the meeting. Chris, will you take over, please? Yes, sir, I will. Hold on, Thank just you so much. I appreciate it. Not a problem. I'm going to pull up the agenda separately for myself so we can follow here. Okay. All right, so the uh, item before us, sorry, reading two things at once, support stakeholder. Agenda. Melanie, can you bring up the agenda? Sorry, it's okay. I, I, it's th that's fine. I just wanted to have uh, the master agenda for myself because there's uh, only one page at a time. Two thousand one two one zero eight. There we go. Okay. We're on number seven because yes. Ray moved the rest of the consent to the end. Yes. Um, all right. So. Um, we're going into 7A. Uh, Melanie, do you have uh, you have motions yep. for budget, budget and finance? Please go ahead. So um, the MER was not available for the meeting because it didn't come out until the 7th. So our meeting was on the 3rd. So this needs a um, first and a second and a vote. A so motion from Gwen Henry. Okay. Second from John Barbera. Okay. Any discussion? We have, um, we had just $175.56 spent for our minutes and that was it. Um, rollover will show up hopefully in September. We'll be able to do a motion for the budget then to amend it for the rollover money. Um, so call for the vote. Thomas. Aye. Dave Sampirio. Yes. John Barbera. Yes. Victor. Aye. Ray's absent now. Um, Dan. Yes. 
Craig. Yes. Um, Cynthia, right now, I won't be able to have you vote right. until we get your stuff figured out. Okay. Um, Gwen? Aye. Melanie, yes. Kelly? Yes. Angela? Yes. Christian? Chris? All right. Yes. Alec? Oh, you can't. That's right. Yeah. Not a and and Adrianita. Yes. All righty. And the next is the budget. And there's our budget. So we have 31, 8, 24, 44. And there it is. Um, attendees. Lydia. Lydia, your hands up. Oh. Yes, I have a question. In the vote counts, is Ray Regalado being marked as absent or excused? Yes, he's being marked as absent. He left. Well, he's sick. Thank you. It's still an excused absence, but it is absent for purposes of the vote. Yeah. I understand it's absent, but I need to know what goes in that parenthesis after his yeah. name. Is it excused he's or absent. absent? It's absent. Thank you. Um, so this is a budget. So this data committee. And so any discussion? Thomas? Yeah, uh, you know, thank you for the work on this. And I was just curious um, for the neighborhood cleanup. I see that's all zero. Is that- Yeah, we never allocated any money. So what we're thinking about doing, it has to, it's by request. We'll add something in there as we go along. Cause okay. we've been doing cleanups over here but I've just been paying for it out of my pocket. Oh, okay. I know. I know. I did one at Target. I was wondering how that works. So I, I would support us putting some money towards that. I think it's a great idea. Great way to get out there. I don't have a motion today, but uh, perhaps what we can do is when the rollover money comes in, we can reallocate if you want and come to the meeting and make a suggestion. Okay, thank you. Um, Gwen. And just for a quick question again, the. Um, the rollover uh, funds are how much again? It's like seventy-four something, I think. It, it, I will. I don't have the confirmed amount. They'll send a letter to it. Seventy-four hundred. Like, uh, yeah. Eight thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um. Anyway, so call for the vote. Um. Thomas. Hi. Dave Semperio. Yes. John? Yes. Victor? Aye. Um, Dan Dixon? Yes. Craig? Yes. Um, Gwen? Yes. Melanie? Yes. Kelly? Yes. Angela? Yes. Chris? Yes. Alec? Or you can't. Oh God, and Adrianita. Yes. Okay, so that's it for that. Um, that's all the budget and finance. So next is um, so the next is for um, public safety. A motion for Ray. We're going to do a forum. Public safety is a forum. A uh, community in incident park. Peck Park Incident Forum Public Safety is on Zoom, September 19th to 22. And what we're doing is having the board approve that forum. This is at a committee. So, and this is what the ad hoc committee is for that was on the consent calendar is to plan this. Um, so any discussion? Gwen? Will there be any budget for flyers to distribute it to help promote this? Um, I'm not sure. It'll depend on what the ad hoc committee comes up with and request for funding Thank and you. how fast we can get it done. Um, so call for the vote on this. Um, Thomas? Aye. 
Dave Sampirio? Yes. John Barbera? Yes. Vic? Aye. Um, Dan Dixon? Yes. Craig? Yes. Um, Cynthia? Yes. Gwen? Aye. Melanie Kelly? Yes. Angela? Yes. Chris? Yes. Alec? Uh, yes. And Adrianita? Yes. Okay, that's it. So next is on the agenda, the um, planning and land use. Is Diana yeah. here? No, I'll be, I'll be, some others of us will be speaking. Oh, okay. Myself and Craig and, sorry. Uh, um, I'm gonna raise my hand here. And I, Alec Norman. I'm gonna raise my hand, Dan, before you start this. Yes. Because at this point, I'm gonna to have to recuse myself because you're <laughs> gonna do the target thing. Understood. Um, so what I have to do now is make a statement as a stakeholder before I recuse myself. I've talked to the city attorney and I can speak as a stakeholder before you start discussion and I have to mute myself and zoom myself out. <laughs> um, <laughs> but what I wanna say is that um, this is a bad situation if they continue the plans as they are for me personally, you know, I, I'm a, board member but i'm a stakeholder also and a homeowner and i'm speaking as a stakeholder right now and Point of order what not to be rude but um if you're going in as a stakeholder shouldn't you go off the zoom because no, right now you appear I like a stakeholder. that i speak as a stakeholder be by the city attorney before and then i leave okay but after. most i mean what i'm saying is most before you um, discuss it or anything, I speak. Don't don't get promoted. Is uh, no, no. As, I, as we it's can my see. own. I'm just asking a question. Here. Can I get finished asking stop talking. a question? Uh, I'm the chair of this meeting. We've already discussed Melanie's uh, statement. We're going to go ahead and proceed. If you have an issue with it procedurally, uh, Octavio is Octavio is probably still here. You can interject if there's a uh, procedural problem. Otherwise, please continue, Melanie. Okay. So the concerns I have are environmental noise, all of that, because it's going to be, you know, the trash can is 200 feet from the back of my house. So the vermin, the bugs, the rats, the coyotes, all of that, the smell. Um, Hamburger Habit is notorious for the smoke things that go up on top of it that emit the smell and the grease off the top. So my car is going to be covered in grease. My house that I just paid $10,000 to have painted is going to be covered in grease. Um, my clothes, I hang my clothes, a lot of my clothes out to dry. They're going to be covered in grease. I won't be able to hang my clothes out anymore. We've had environmental people come and talk to us. We've had real estate people come and tell us that our house is going to depreciate $100,000 if this goes in it's criminal at itself that they're even considering this. And so, yeah, so at that point I bow out, but this is just, it's atrocious, the whole thing. And they can't even keep up the cleanliness of that parking lot as it is and the vermin and the people hanging out and the homeless, you know, putting all their stuff behind my house as it is and in the parking lot. They can't do anything about it or any security now. What's it gonna happen when two more entities show up right behind our house? So yeah, but with that, I recuse myself. We'll see you later, Melanie. Thank you. I will proceed then. The letter that the committee is proposing to send- Victor to is going- to Okay, Dan, just a minute. I Sorry. have to stop screen share to leave. Yeah, so stop, this is... stop, yeah, stop your sharing so I can share the letter. Right. And then just for, just so everybody knows when, after Melanie is gone, when this topic is over, I will let her know when she can come back. Thank you.
Um, Dan, there's a, a Word file without the photos, and then there's the PDF with the photos. Is the PDF alone good enough? Uh, I, well, I think the photos might be of some use. Yes. I mean, do we need the do we need the Word file or only the PDF? With the board's indulgence, I'm going to say that this is a 14-page document. I don't think we have the time or energy to go through the whole thing. Yeah, you can probably, if you need to read through, you could probably open your own browser window and uh, look that up. The picture's not right. good. Yeah, both both the Word and the PDF version are in the uh, agenda packet for the board members and, well, everybody. Okay, right. go ahead. Thank you. The proposed project uh, at the target, tar target parking lot at Gaffey and Capital consists of a new Starbucks with a drive-through function and a new and a habit restaurant without a drive-through. Uh, the proposed project is designated for the far southwest corner of the target parking lot. That's the corner closest to Berrywood Avenue, closest to the uh, park across the street. It when, when Target was built and opened in late in the last century, the original proposal was for Target to uh, build a similar, not necessarily equal, but similar building on the southeast corner at the corner of Gaffey and Capitol proper. They opted not to do that. It was removed from their development plan and nothing was heard for the next dozen years until this proposal came up. It involves uh, taking the property that is proposed and splitting it for the uses of these two businesses. The Neighborhood Council uh, Planning and Land Use Committee is uh, asking the board to support a letter to the zoning administrator of the city planning department stating our objections to the uh, to the totality of the development uh, the de proposed development sorry and without going through all 14 pages i will hit some of the high points we're aware that uh, that nearby neighbors will be impacted by this development. That is certainly a consideration, but there are other considerations involved. The uh, photo that you see on your screen now shows uh, Target's preferred parking area within their own property. Uh, however, that far southeast corner where the original building was uh, planned is uh, not that highly used as you can see from this aerial view. And for the last year to two, it has been unused at all during the remodeling of the building. And it is uh, used for uh, not infrequently for Christmas tree lot activities. I'm moving, I'm moving through this. The uh, people proposing the project say that the project will enhance the built environment in the surrounding neighborhood or will provide a service that is essential and beneficial to the community, city, or region. Their argument is uh, that our, our neighborhood needs more restaurants. Uh, we point out in this uh, large pink circle with the purple center, that there are plenty of restaurants in the area, not least along Gaffey Street. And the restaurants and eateries on Gaffey Street are for the most part locally owned. They are not, they, uh, some are small franchises, but they are locally owned uh, here in the South Bay and in San Pedro. Uh, they are not uh, large franchise operations. The developer contends that the project's location, size, height, operations, and other significant features will 
excuse me, will be compatible with and will not adversely affect or further degrade adjacent properties, the surrounding neighborhood or the public health, welfare or safety. We point out that, uh, that there clearly will be an impact for the nearby homes, but in addition, there will be an increase in traffic ac uh, activity and uh, other impacts on the park across the street. This will be, uh, this is a near a, a busy crossing, street crossing, and this will be attracting quite a bit more traffic into the driveway on Capitol than already occurs. So there is hazard involved. There's a photograph that shows uh, cooking smoke coming out of a Habit Burger Grill <laughs> in Solana Beach. Uh, those of you who live anywhere near Gaffey and uh, Channel are aware that Larry's Hamburgers puts out a lot of smoke most of the time. It's not adja directly adjacent to uh, residential properties, but it is typical of a of a uh, grill uh, cooking operation in a restaurant. Much of what we talk about in this letter involves the current state of the, of the property, which we acknowledge is mostly due to Target, but the insertion of two new businesses will attract uh, more people, more trash, and certainly more traffic. The developer contends that the residential uses, that the residential areas in the vicinity will be adequately protected from any significant noise resulting from outdoor speakers, autos, or other sources associated with the lot. But the fact is the proposal is to have the drive-through operation open from 4.30 or 5 a.m. until 11 o'clock at night. That's a lot of traffic in line going through uh, adjacent to a residential uh, neighborhood and a lot of traffic going in and out of that already busy driveway on Capitol. Another concern is the concern we've always had, which is the water table along Capitol Drive and, and the, um, the normal expectation of water at the curb, up the driveway, and even in the parking lot. This is not addressed at all by the developers. It's not taken into consideration. We are asking that it be taken into consideration and be part of the finding by the city that it needs to be dealt with once and for all. We're, uh, we have some objections to the vagueness, uh, vague landscaping uh, plans that they've made. Uh, as we have found with the target project in general, promises, promises, but when uh, all is said and done, what you get is not what you would necessarily hope for in terms of remediating the look of the buildings and uh, cushioning, cushioning the appearance of it with appropriate vegetation. We're not necessarily completely opposed to some kind of development on this property. We are insistent that it should be moved to the southeast corner as uh, Target originally intended that it would be or suggested that it would be. We offer uh, a, a list of uh, of requested conditions to the uh, conditional use permit. And uh, I won't go through all of them, but we want to, whether or not 
this particular project is built, we want hours limited, hours of operation limited from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. We want trash pickup limited to daytime hours, normal trash hours, not at night. We are requ requesting a continuous security patrol of the parking lot. The parking lot at Target always seems to have some sort of issue going on. And with new businesses, it would seem in their interest to protect their own uh, places of business with uh, appropriate security. That would be something they should work out with Target, but we believe it's very important. We would uh, require the applicant to repair and maintain the sidewalk along Capitol Drive, get the Capitol Drive frontage, which as you can see from some of the photographs is quite broken up, partly due to trees and partly due to the high water table. Mm. There are other uh, conditions we would ask to be addressed and insisted on to the developer by the city before any final decision is made. But our position in this letter is to oppose as proposed the San Pedro marketplace at Target. We, we oppose the conditional use permit and the category, categorical exemption that allows them to essentially build it with no consideration for uh, environmental issues. So the letter is asking the City Planning Commission to review and reject the, the project as proposed. That is the motion. It's from committee. So I would ask for a comment and a vote. I see uh, Gwen's hand and I had a question uh, of my own. Go ahead, Gwen. Wonderful letter. Um, so once again, uh, the this community has had uh, many verbal requests for many of these things have already been discussed. Is there anything that the developer and target did acknowledge and change with our copious feedback? Is there anything that actually did change between their initial proposal and this one? Because um, it seems that they haven't taken much of anything. Tom or Alec, if you were in these uh, any of these meetings, perhaps you'd comment. My sense is virtually nothing. They're attempting to flick this uh, flea off of their shoulder and move ahead with their project. Uh, they, uh, I have one thing to add, if you wanted me to do that. There was one thing they did, and it was moving the trash can back like six meters from the wall. I believe that was one of the only changes that they actually made. You're, uh, thank you. Thank you, Alec. You're absolutely right. That was the first meeting that I ever heard about this, and that was talked about. They did realign the trash uh, yard, which is an enclosed uh, block wall with the trash can inside of it. They did move it farther away from the residences. Uh, it is still within the uh, distances that were mentioned earlier, but uh, that is one thing they did and it's about the only thing. Uh, I would like to ask, and I, I have a sense of where the answer may already lie, but um, in, in as much as if there are probably a lot of restaurants of various sizes relatively close to uh, uh, residences, um, are there any considerations that, I mean, you, you made a point of showing the, uh, the smokestack. Um, are there any sort of pop, Prop 65 limitations or things like that? Are there any, because um, it, it makes sense that if you're, any source of smoke that's right next to somebody's house, and this is a, a couple houses at least, are there any sort of limitations about things like that or ways uh, that, that it could be challenged? And again, because I know there are probably an awful lot of small restaurants near a lot of uh, houses and apartments, this may just have been answered already, but is this really just kind of a case of uh, commerce being given the benefit of the doubt uh, until we can come up with something uh, you know, significant? I don't have a specific answer to that, Chris. I wish I did. 
uh, it would make sense uh, based on your question that this is not the only situation in the state of California where this is occurring, but it is a case where we can take the bull by the horns and say, whatever else has been done elsewhere, uh, it doesn't have to happen here. Uh, this is not a healthy uh, environment, especially in this time of uh, attempting to reduce uh, uh, <laughs> uh, smoke from cooking operations. It's, it is, it, if it were grandfathered in in a building where it had been going on for years, of course, that's one thing, especially in a family run business, for instance. But this is creating a new source of, uh, of pollution in an area where it has not been seen before. We think the city, which is doing its level best to uh, rework our entire mode of life in this city, vis-a-vis -vis air quality, really needs to take this into account. It's a really good point. Um, I see a hand in attendees. Uh... Ted, go ahead, please. Ted, you should be able to speak now. You need to unmute first. Can you hear me now? You're alive. Yes, Ted. All right. Um, thank you. I just wanted to express uh, my concerns as a homeowner in in lot one there right behind this uh, proposed project. Um, but I also really wanted to uh, thank the uh, Planning and Land Use Committee for, for putting together a, a really uh, comprehensive letter that seems to cover most of the major issues that um, uh, have been raised with regard to this uh, project. I'm, I'm hopeful that uh, this letter um, supported by the board will will uh, speak to the uh, commissioner who's going to uh, review this project and hopefully um, help uh, protect uh, the neighbors down here on the uh, south uh, end of Berrywood from this project. Uh, for uh, my part, I just wanted to add with regard to the, uh, with the target property, the letter uh, touches on it, but I think it's worthy of a little bit more emphasis is that um, similar to the prop, that occur up at the in and out burger at the uh, top of Capitol at Western, uh, we anticipate that a, uh, having two businesses uh, right behind my house and my neighbor's houses will uh, attract a lot of people, particularly a lot of people on the Friday and Saturday nights, that crowd, and that it will create a tremendous amount of noise, turmoil, commotion, and, and problems immediately behind uh, the wall that six houses uh, have with Target. Beyond that, I would just uh, want to uh, ask and even implore the uh, board members to uh, vote in support of this letter and, and get it in the uh, file for the commissioner review. Um, thanks again. I would uh, just add to that comment that we're kind of looking forward here uh, and anticipating that the use proposed for this new building may not remain the same always. And while uh, uh, Starbucks may be able to predict traffic flow to the vehicle uh, in any given hour of any given day, were the, uh, were the function of that building ever to change still with a drive-in, similar to what is happening you know, at the, the new Panda Express, for instance, uh, at the Ralph's uh, Shopping Center, uh, there'd be no way to predict the amount of traffic that would be generated. And uh, it could be a problem down the road. Thank you. I see Angela Sumner's hand raised. Go ahead, please. Um, OK, so just a tiny little detail, but I also would add that I very much support the letter. Um, you had mentioned when you were talking about Christmas trees being in part a portion of that lot. And I didn't see it anywhere in the written letter. Um, but I was just wanted to clarify does Target have Christmas trees or was that Home Depot? And this is only relevant if it's in the letter. And Angela, I, I apologize. I may have been hallucinating or remembering an era gone by. Oh, I believe that, and that could be the case too, but they are on that. <laughs> 
outside of the lot at Home Depot in the parking lot, but it's totally irrelevant yeah. if it's not yeah. written in the letter. Well, well, you're right. And, and Target has shown on more than one occasion, they're willing to use that parking for other purposes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it, 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 we agree it's uh, not bad parking, but there's plenty of other parking available. I agree. I agree. I just want to make sure there was no mistake in the letter. Thank you. I, 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 whatever it says in the letter, I will not change. Okay. You're right. Thank you. Sure. Okay. And are there any other uh, comments or questions on the item? Okay. It looks like there's none. Yeah. It, it does seem, and this obviously would not be the first restaurant that met some significant opposition. Uh, reminded of Cane's uh, that was proposed and then swiftly uh, kicked to the curb. Um, and the problems of uh, in and out, including in, uh, up to uh, gun violence uh, occurring in the parking lot, gives a sense of the types of things you might not want to invite in. It's sort of a blank check. Uh, again, they can it's rewrite. Uh, Chris, you're right. It's really changing the landscape of this parking lot and turning it from a passive uh, place to uh, egress and access and egress into the building uh, into an active location with long hours and no ill intent coming from the businesses, but businesses these days are subject to what's going on in society. Very, Thank uh, you. Very much so yes, uh, Gwen, go ahead and then, uh, uh, then Craig. Uh, in regards to the traffic, I, I don't know if they uh, did they do a study on the on the uh, uh, traffic flow because I continue to see this if it's placed in this uh, lower uh, southwest corner. Um, there will be traffic that's coming through the driveway on Capitol Drive, but there will be a lot of people that will cut through the parking lot, uh, probably right in front of the Target, and probably hit a lot, you know, that's, that's a congested area for pedestrians coming out with their baskets. Um, I'm wondering if they had even discussed, thought of the idea that people will want to exit on, Cap on Gaffey, uh, as opposed to return on Capitol. And I just want to uh, mention, uh, uh, point out with this wonderful map here that all of the trash for Target was placed as far away from the residences as possible. You can see that um, it's, it's in the um, northeast corner. Correct. And, and that the, the trucks can come in and out very quickly. And that is not the case for this lower uh corner over here it actually is very invasive if anything it it, it that's yeah i'm sorry no <laughs> there's a, a no question that if uh, plan b were looked at moving the buildings there would need to be a substantial reworking of the traffic flow in that part of the parking lot no question go ahead Craig. Okay, one, I wanted to note that um, people are speaking numerous times, and then I put up my hand, you let them speak numerous times and not me. That's just the point of order. I'd like to call the question. Thank you, Craig. You ready to take the vote? Was that a second? Oh, do we need to second? Do I need to second that? I'll second that. Gwendolyn Henry moved. Thank you, Gwen. Well, Craig it's moved. not a committee, right? Yes, it's from committee. Yes. Yeah, but calling the question oh, means we question. go to the vote instead of discuss. Oh, yeah. Oh, right, right, that's right. True. Yeah, yeah, that's what we were doing. Yeah. So, so second. <laughs> calling the question. Don't need to. Thank you. Let's thank you. Okay, John Barbera. Yes. Vic Christensen, I. Dan Dixon. Yes. Craig Goldfarb. Abstain. Cynthia Gagne. Abstain. Gwen Henry. Aye. Kelly Miller. Yes. Alec Norman. Yes. Thomas Norman. Yes. Adrienne Ederes Cruz. Yes. David Samperio. Yes. Angela Sumner. 
Yes. Chris Valle. Yes. So that's 11 eyes, two abstentions. So that carries. All right. I will now, Thank you. I will now let um, Melanie know she can log back in. So it'd be good to give her some time to actually log in because she completely logged out. All right, we'll be standing by then for item C2, 7C2. Do you want me to start? Uh, we're going to give uh, Melanie just a moment to log back in. Let's see where she is. Uh, can take a minute or two here. Do, 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 do. Okay, um, Melanie, are you gonna share the the new stuff from here on again? You're muted. You're muted. Yeah, you got to co-host me again in order to share it. <laughs> yeah, right that, that would help. And we're starting on the Walker's Cafe CIS, so yep. 7C2. Okay, Craig, go ahead, please. Okay, this is at a committee, the council file. Um, it's, it's little the way it's put on the agenda. It's not about the landmarking of, of um, Walker's, it's about um, un unpermitted work. I'll read the council file, the CS we want to put in. On July 14th, Prospect Booth, the new owners of Walker's Cafe at 700 West Paseo Del Mar in San Pedro were issued a work order after Los Angeles Department of Building and Safety Inspector Andrew Beely found them doing unpermitted work on the premises despite falling, failing to obtain required permits from LADBS and the Air Quality Management District for the work being done. And despite having been issued a work order, stop work order, they have continued to do construction on site. The San, San Pedro, the Northwest San Pedro Neighborhood Council, it should say, are extremely concerned about the conditions of Walker's Cafe, a pending historic cultural landmark um, and resource of great significance to the community. We're looking to the Department of Building and Safety to exercise tremendous leverage they have to protect this resource. We asked the council office to review the situation on site with the building inspector assigned to the case, Andrew Beely among the inspector supervisors, as well as council members, council member Busque Annual's field office, Deputy Ryan L Ferguson. Lambert Gessinger for the from the Office of, of Historic Resources and the neighborhood prosecutor, Khalil Rashid. Following the site visit, we asked that Ryan Firth and our attend the Joint Planning and Land Use Committee, meaning as well as Coastal San Pedro Neighborhood Council's Coastline Parks Committee to report back and tell us what enforcement actions will be taken. Furthermore, we are extremely concerned about the fact that following two unanimous votes at the Cultural Heritage Commission meetings in January and March, Walker Cafe remains stuck in limbo, awaiting a plum hearing date while illegal and potential irreversible work on the property is taking place. We urge the city to reschedule plum hearing at the next available date on August 20, in August 2022. Because this is a serious issue, what is unfolding quickly, we would like action taken within 30 days of the receipt of this CIS. Any questions? Uh, just to comment that it seems that if they're, if these are uh, contractors who are unwilling to abide by a stop work order, I would be uh, very worried that there'd be a lot of other things that they weren't doing properly as well. It, it seems like a really dangerous situation for a vulnerable site. It's not unusual in the city 
to have people doing not pulling permits and doing it. It's unusual that they they were cited and continued to work. Yeah, that's super fishy. Uh, Gwen, go ahead. It's very unfortunate. Um, Craig, uh, what what how has Coastal uh, sounded off on this? Um, they were on top of this. They I, I believe they voted on it also at the same time as our committee. I don't know what their um, I don't think they've had their board meeting yet, so I don't think they vote on it there. But I believe I recall them uh, voting affirmative on this in their. Um, I think they had a quorum and they voted a forum affirmative on this, but they, these were supportive, very supportive. Uh, the lady, I was very impressed with the lady that gave this. She had, she had gotten three thousand signatures for the landmark. Can we call for the boat? Uh, I think we're ready. Okay, John Barbera. Yes. Vic Christensen, hi. Dan Dixon. Yes. Fred Goldfarb. Yes. Cynthia Gagne. Yes. Gwen Henry. Aye. Melanie Lebrecht. Yes. Kelly Miller. Yes. Alec Norman. Yes. Thomas Norman. Yes. Adrian Uderes Cruz. Yes. David Samperio. Yes. Angela Sumner. Yes. Chris Valle. Yes. Okay, that's 14 eyes. All right, and the um, motion is carried to uh, send a letter. We go to item 7C3. And that would be Alec Norman. Okay, uh, cool. Um, so first of all, this is a CIS referring to bill, digital billboards being created by the metro, uh, metro portion of LA. Uh, but the first thing I wanted to do was uh, I had a couple more ideas. So I wanted a motion for an amendment. This is not out of committee, the CIS is, but um, is that it here? Is Let's that see. it? No, that's the actual motion from the CIS. This is the CIS, and then this is the other. Okay, okay. So the the other one is the one that is unamended. Am I able to share my screen to show the amendments I would be proposing? Um, I'd have to stop share and then give you the ability. Uh, I can I can do that. Okay, so let me stop. There you go. For the sake of that, uh, I motion to entertain the, the amendment. Oh, thank you. And uh, I'll, I'll second that then. Um, so here is the regular CIS, and then all the stuff in green would be the, the amended wording of it. So I wanted to make it clear what they were proposing. So the first part would be that there are 34 freeway facing metro um, billboards. And then there would be 22 non-freeway structures. So this is opposing the creation of roughly 50 uh, metro-owned property uh, digital billboards. And then uh, for the second amendment, it was saying uh, it's basically an example saying that an option they could be doing is replacing static billboards with um, digital billboards they already have. Sorry, there's a lot of noise outside. Apologies. Ellie? And then, uh, oh, sorry, what? So this is the actual CIS that you're changing? Uh, the CIS that I'm proposing, yes. Right, so okay. these would be the amendments of okay. it. Like anything in green is the changes I'm making. Okay. Um, so uh, this, the other part would be that I'm emphasizing the freeway structures because those are the ones people are going to be seeing while driving at very fast speeds. And then uh, I just clarified that there would be potential instances of driver distraction happening because of this. And then I, clear, I made it more clear about how the EIR that need, needs to be completed before they put any processes on these because there could be an issue that shows up later that they didn't know about. And then the last thing is, since this is a comment, I wanted to propose that if um, they do end up making these digital billboards anyway, that they would try to remove all the static billboards because at least there would be less billboards overall. 
Nice. Do we have any uh, questions or discussion on the amendment? Yes, I see. Uh, Gwen, is, your hand is still up. It was up before. Did, did you have any? Yeah. Oh, I, I thought I okay. put it down. Yeah, I, I did have a question, but uh, please take take Craig and anyone else first. I see uh, Melanie and then uh, Craig. Two things. Um, the first thing is, um, so is this in opposition to this, the council file or for? Uh, yeah. This would be in opposition of creating the uh, digital billboards. Yes. Okay. And then the, if the, with this passing, you know, the CIS, the revision of it, if this passes, I would need you to send me a hard copy of the whole thing complete in the revision because okay. I'm the one that files the CISs, so I'll need a whole complete um, revision sent to me complete. Oh yeah, that's that's totally fine, I can do that. Okay, all righty, and that's it. Okay, cool. Uh, Craig? Okay, so I keep looking at them, at this, and it's, you know, we're, we're taking away, there's already right digital, billboards out there. There's brand new ones just out there on the Harbor Freeway. So what we're doing away, taking away is for um, a source of revenue for Caltrans uh, to, to make money, do so ecologically free because they're not going to be doing printing. Nobody's going to have to drive out there and put new signs up etc. I don't think that I, all these signs I've seen, instead of trying to, you know, outlaw this and try and be Luddites, I think that we're, what we really should be doing is saying how, how this um, technology should be used. How long should things be up there before they change? Can these digital billboards be used for things like Amber Alerts and those sort of things? So they're really trying to get across to people. Stuff like this is just saying, no, we don't want this, but they're out there already. We're just gonna make sure that um, our, you know, our rapid transit, our Metro can't profit off of this, which is not what we want, what, not what I wanna do. I want as much money going into our Metro as possible. So I, I oppose this because I don't, I, though I understand, how Alec is seeing this, I'm thinking it's the wrong direction for us. I'm done. Was this okay, more, um, was this an opposition to the uh, the CIS or the or the amendment? Because it's uh, can I clarify the amendment? Because oh, what sure. you're saying kind of is a little bit different. Because yeah. uh, if you look at what I've um, changed a little bit is um, I'm saying focus on the billboards you have because they have many static billboards. So by um, using this amendment, it's actually saying we should focus on switching those static billboards to ones that are digital. But on the end, I'm saying get rid of 10 of those static billboards and replace it with one so that you still can generate some revenue with the one more advanced technology, but have less of them out there. And I also want to emphasize these are freeway structures. So they're large billboards that you can see mostly on the freeway. So that's kind of what I'm emphasizing with all of this. I'm sorry, uh, Gwen, go ahead. Uh, well, first I uh, wanted a, a question answered. Uh, the, regarding the EIR process, is there uh, some procedure where they are allowed to continue with this before the EIR has been um, uh, completed? And um, then I had some other thoughts after this. Uh, okay. Uh, um just to clarify, for the, this is a motion in, in the council file. So this is directing um, this, like with the city attorney on, at the top, it says city attorney and um, with the planning department, this is saying, go ahead and start with creating drafts of it. So technically the EIR could finish while they're doing that, but I'm saying they should focus on waiting for the IR to happen and then do it. So if they're not building them yet, they're getting into the planning stage. Um. Well, in regards to this, uh, there are studies that uh, actually uh, 
uh, check the distraction level and uh, people's habits and behaviors with these digital signs. But um, uh, I don't know whether any of these will impact our 110 freeway in particular. But uh, the one thing with digital signs is, is that they're getting more and more sophisticated. They do cycle through different images. And there's, there, uh, so what it'll be is 10, 10 different flashing, changing things. And do not ex expect that it won't be motion, um, movement. Uh, on those advertisements. These are digital, so it could conceivably uh, include that. And I don't know if anybody recalls, but uh, the Harbor uh, Community College, uh, there have been times where that light, though, that, that's a, a, a significant, the, the light coming from that sign has often um, actually startled me in. Uh, I'm sorry. This is we're we're still discussing the the amendment itself, not the the CIR. Oh, the amendment. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, anyway, yeah, the EIR. I was concerned about that. So thank you. All right. So why don't we uh, deal with the uh, our, our stance on the amendment itself, and then go back to the uh, document as a whole. My mistake. Okay. So uh, can I entertain a motion to uh, vote on the amendment? Chris, we do have a hand up. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, thank you. I see Lori Jacobs. Go ahead, please. Hi. I'm not sure if this question should be under the amendment or the original one, but um, are these static digital signs where they're just one message, or are they the ones that are con continually moving? Because the ones that continually move are a, a severe distraction to drivers. Mm -hmm. But if it's a static, stationary mo uh, message, and every, you know, like five minutes, it just changes. That's not a, as big a deal. But Alec, I wasn't sure if um, when we say digital billboards, if that means it's a, a roving message that would distract people. Um, just to clarify that, this is still in the planning stage. So they have not decided to choose that or not. But from what we've seen in L.A., uh, um, for the most part, most of them do are moving and swift shifting slides, which is why they replace static billboards, because they make more money. So uh, my presumption would be that it would be a moving one, not a static one. So could there be a clause in here that says it can only move every so often so it's not <laughs> such a distraction? Uh, we could, but uh, let's see. That's really hard to narrow down at, at this point. So unless there's a friendly right. amendment you, you from one of my board members or right. something. Yeah. Okay. All right. I understand. Thank you. All right. And um, I see Dan Dixon. Go ahead. This is a really tough one. And it's um, it's really interesting. I uh, I'm not sure I trust Caltrans to know if this revenue stream uh, is safe for the drivers driving beneath and around the, the signs. Um, Craig makes a good, strong, a very strong point. Um, I, I, I'm a little, I guess my main concern is the safety of these things. Mm -hmm. And uh, the question and what you're talking about in terms of static images and animated images and that sort of thing. Uh, anybody who read Fahrenheit 451 as a teenager, as I did many, many years ago, remembers the uh, half mile long lighted freeway signs, uh, which <laughs> advertised products with entire stories as people drove by at 80 miles an hour. It was a, uh, a terror that I couldn't imagine happening in those days, but now we're on the verge of it between Tesla and uh, dancing uh, billboards. It's hard. I, I'm not sure which way to vote. Thanks, Dan. Well, I, I will. Uh, oh, sorry. I was just going to emphasize that this is for freeway and stuff like while you're driving. So it's not like um, those signs that you would see on bus benches, just to clarify. No, I, I, I understand that. And also okay. as a point of clarification, uh, we were talking about uh, Metro versus Caltrans. Uh, Caltrans is state and uh, Metro's county. Yeah, yeah, this would be Metro for LA. So just, yeah. But it is it is concentrated along freeways, correct? Yes. You oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, go ahead, Thomas Norman. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Craig raises some good points, not being part of the committee. And I want to defer to the, the committee that looked at this more carefully. 
Um, so can you share any sense of the revenue that would be lost if if we didn't have these signs and um, you know, did they present any information saying these are in fact safe or they're going to use the safe ones? It's hard for me to to get a really you know good sense of the the cost benefit. So if you want to highlight um, you know any any facts they kind of provided versus you know kind of a sense uh, that would be helpful for me in voting. Okay, so for the motion that it was stating is for the revenue, it was fifty fifty. So the city government would get fifty percent of the revenue. But I'm not saying get rid of all billboards. I'm saying focus on the ones that already exist. So but, but it's I, a new I amendment. I was wondering, is, is that number like a million dollars or five hundred dollars or any? They, this is in planning phase. The only thing that they've said is that they would get fifty percent of the revenue. That's it. All right, and I see. Oh, can I just a quick follow up to what? Were there any stats given that that cities who use these or LA? has like more accidents, you know, more crashes, or, you know, is that, was there any evidence presented there that um, the non-committee members should know in voting? Not that I can recall. There were studies that proved that there is a possible correlation with um, drive, distracted driving and billboards on the highways and stuff like that, but nothing like, it was more objective that it could be a correlation, nothing major. Sorry, I was muted. It looks like we've been around once uh, and everyone's had a chance to comment. Uh, uh, I see Gwen and uh, Craig again. I could remind everyone that this is for the amendment. There can yeah, also be discussion the on we would the actual motion. Dispense with the amendment before we move on to the merits of the overall CIS. Uh, so can I entertain a motion please to uh, call for the question on this amendment? I believe Gwen motioned and I seconded. Oh, okay, so we have Gwen moving and Alec Norman second. Uh, right. Go, go ahead and proceed. Am I taking the roll? No, I was. I oh, just wanted oh. to make sure you're you're ready for the roll call. For the amendment. Uh, yes. Right. This is for the amendment only. John Barbera. Yes. Vic Christensen, aye. Dan Dixon. Yes. Craig Goldfarb. No. Cynthia Gagne. Yes. Gwen Henry. Aye. Melanie Lebrecht. Yes. Kelly Miller. Yes. Alec Norman. <clears throat> yes. Thomas Norman. Yes. Uh, Adrian Iterace Cruz. Yes. David Semperio. Yes. Angela Sumner. Yes. Chris Valle. Yes. Hey, that's 13 ayes and one nay. All right, so the amendment is approved. And with that in mind, and keeping in mind, we'd already done some discussion of the overall merits of the CIS. Is there any uh, additional question or comment on the CIS as amended? Oh, I see. Uh, I'm gonna go with Craig. Right, please. Okay, um, just briefly because uh, um, Thomas asked, uh, I I did do some research, and there on the distraction, and it was very inconclusive. Some some studies say yes, yeah, some studies say no. Um, it's the big reason, one of the big reasons why I think we start we should. There's more than just this um, metro project. There's a lot of, um, of these billboards going up. And rather, we need to, I think that instead of saying, oh, you can't do this, maybe what we should be working on is an overreaching, overarching policy of how, how this technology is going to be used. How often do you change the signs? How um you know what what would be a distraction what wouldn't uh can there what public service items will be put forth on these sides um that's it thank you and uh dan dixon thank you um the, these are grander versions of the freeway signs that are already already in place with uh 
Amber Alerts and that sort of thing, I believe, in my opinion. And um, those seem quite distracting if you're driving to work in the morning and a fresh message message comes up with a description of a vehicle and you know who's missing and this, that, and the other thing. Uh, I don't think they are necessarily lethal, but they are certainly a distraction to drivers. And I, I'm I'm a little, as I say, I'm I'm torn about this. I I just don't know that it is worth the risks, even if they are not. Uh, 100% provable. I'm not sure that it's worth the risk of of uh, fighting human nature in terms of uh, knowing or not knowing if people will be distracted. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Dan. And uh, uh, Gwen, go ahead. Thank you, Craig, for mentioning the uh, public service component of it, if they will be utilized by uh, Metro for public service advertisements. I, I'm hoping that maybe there's a response to that. But um, in regards to the distractions, I believe that the studies on distractions, well, well to your point, Craig, um, the, the only thing that you could really uh, say with that is how much time your eyes are diverted to these signs versus a static sign. And there are studies that say that it is drawn for an extended period of time. Unfortunately, with the distractions, we already have mobile phones. We have uh, panels in, uh, on our cars, our vehicles. Uh, there are movies and kids, and there's a lot of media flashing screens. So it probably is very difficult to, um, to study. But to Craig's point, the, uh, the studies tend to focus on the amount of time that your eyes are pulled away to these signs versus another type of sign. Thank you. Thank you, Gwen. And uh, Thomas, Norman, go ahead. No, thanks. So I, I'm doing a little bit of research too. And um, just for some context, I see La Palma is expecting to get 204,000 a year for the city with digital billboards for Halber Bank the stretches of 91 that goes through there. Um, and I guess it looks like Governor Brown was in favor of the state doing this and not letting cities do it. So, um, you know, just, just in terms of the, the main motion before us, then any, I'm just, you know, wondering if any other committee members had things they found persuasive or, uh, you know, useful. I, I think, I, I guess I'm not so opposed to living in a city like Blade Runner, right? This, this, you know, I wouldn't want it to be unsafe, but they're, um, you know, it's a modern aesthetic that could come with these. And if there's anything else folks have before we vote, I'd love to hear it. I would uh, just briefly, um, as awesome as it would be to live in Blade Runner, um, I know that there are communities such as Southgate, uh, I know Lawndale has a pretty significant uh, digital billboard um, that do receive uh, significant revenue. Um, and I do know that, in, for instance, in uh, Southgate, um, the uh, city government is very actively uh, uh, they have active control and programming of, of the type of advertising and the messaging that goes in there. But you know, if you've driven on that part of the 710 or if you're at 405 and 110 and see the big um, triangular uh, uh, sign there, uh, you know, you can judge for yourself if your attention is drawn away or not. And it seems to me that we're coming down to a, you know, a legitimate public safety um, a concern uh, that is you know, another drop in the bucket of distraction uh, might be that one bit that's too much and at the same time we have the issue of uh, revenue with what is uh, ultimately public space and I know that uh, with respect to Caltrans and with Metro sometimes there are revenue generating projects such as the fast track project where um, the landowner which is in this case would be the county uh, or whoever is really ultimately owns the land under the road um, has the option to put some of these revenue generating uh, schemes into place and they will often um, sort of uh, well, they have leverage against the local authority. That is, uh, we will build this toll lane or we will put this uh, billboard up and you can go in with us and get some of the revenue or we can do it ourselves and keep all the money. And so there is sometimes more to the arrangement that might be immediately you know, visible. That's something that's worth uh, asking about because again, ultimately the property owner does, which in this case, the authority would be the county or the state uh, can do those things. And it may simply be the better of two bad deals if you're not in, interested in having the uh, 
signs there. Or if you want to look at it as a glass half full thing is if they're going to build it anyway, at least we could get some money out of it. So there's a couple of different ways to, to come after it. Um, so we've been through everybody once. Uh, Gwen, I'll let you go ahead once and then let's uh, maybe entertain a, a motion. Uh, we have question. a couple hands up in attendees I'm that sorry. have not spoken. You're, up, you're absolutely right. I saw those and I forgot. So let's go, before we go back to Gwen, let's go to Pat Nave. Whoops, I'm sorry, I just muted you accidentally. Go ahead, uh, Pat. You're, you're good. Go ahead, Pat. We cannot hear you if you are speaking. Uh, hold on, uh, we're, Pat, we're going to still try and hear you. We're going to go to Lori uh, in the meantime. Hold on just a moment. Go ahead, Lori. OK, um, as a stakeholder, I don't believe revenue should ever be a priority over the safety and adding a distraction to drivers who are already, as somebody said earlier, have too many dis distractions. I don't, you know, revenue is one thing, but it can never be a priority over safety. Thank you. Thanks, Lori. And uh, Pat, are you, uh, are you with us? Pat, I'm going to try disabling and then re-enabling. Whoop. Uh, OK, come on. All right, Pat, see if it works now. Yes, still can't hear you. Sorry, Pat. I could conceivably go while he possibly hangs up and tries again and calls back to maybe if that's better. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, Ben. Um, in regards to, to this, uh, as more and more screens go up, of course, as commercial enterprises, uh, they will want to compete for your attention. And so there could always be uh, increased competition for visuals and things like that to, to draw your eye. So um, as more distractions come, come along, um, uh, could it get too bright? Um, Alec, if you can, uh, if there are some limits to the, the amount of uh, uh, visuals to the um, intensity of the lights. Once again, I have been blinded by some that are highly intense. And um, so hopefully that there's some, some comment in that in some portion of the process. Thanks. Yeah. And I, I do not know if there's any standards on those types of things in terms of luminosity, even if there are, if they're followed, if they were measured and followed up on. It looks like we may have Pat come back through another channel. I'm going to let Diana unmute. Go ahead. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we got you on Diana's side. <laughs> you know, okay. I don't know about needing any studies to see if they're distracting. These sign companies spend lots and lots of money building these signs and they rent them for lots and lots of money. They've got all the studies they need to know that people watch their signs. That's all I got to say. Wait. Well, Diana wants to say something. I, well, I, I, I would just add that I, when I think about these signs, I think of the one on the um, 110 North. I assume it's still there. It was on the um, side of the freeway right near the Coliseum. And I used to see it when I was driving to work and I frequently found myself trying to figure out, trying to watch for what it was going to say next. And so I, I, I'm very concerned about the distraction just from my own experience. And with regard to what um, Gwen talked about in terms of the, the light and things like that, those are things that would be um, considered, I think, in the EIR, which they haven't yet done. And so part of the problem here is that this motion before the city council is premature because those kinds of that kind of information isn't yet available. Thank you very much, Pat and Diana. Um, I see. Oh, uh, and yeah, I, I guess the, that's the, one of the best takes of the evening is that if the signs didn't work, they wouldn't be there. Um, because somebody has to pay for them to do that. All right, so it looks like we've, we've gone around once and then some. So uh, would someone like to uh, move to uh, call the question on this? 
does it need a motion if the oh, right. original thing came out of committee or if it was amended do you have to do another motion uh i'm not sure but it, if it came out if the original motion came out of the committee and we've already passed the amendment to it i don't think you need to move it a second time okay yes. cool call then, the question uh, yeah, we can call the question okay john barbera uh, and then uh, just be, before, just to make it clear, this is the uh, the CIS as amended. John Barbera. Yes. Uh, come back to me. Vic Christensen, I, Dan Dixon. Yes. <laughs> Craig Goldfarb. No. Cynthia Gagne. Yes. Gwen Henry. Yes. Melanie Lebrecht. Yes. Kelly Miller. Yes. Alec Norman. Yes. Thomas Norman. Yes. Adrienne Ederes Cruz. Yes. David Samperio. Yes. Angela Sumner. Yes. Chris Valle. Yes. John Barbera. Yes. Okay, once again, 13 ayes and one nay. Oh. All right, and the motion is carried. A um, little time check here. It's uh, almost uh, 10 after 8, and we do have a few more items to move through. So we should proceed then to item 7D, uh, bylaws and elections committee. Uh, and there is a motion, but Ray has uh, stepped out. So does anyone else know what the uh, nature of that was for us to uh, consider. Well, it was it was about the elections worksheet, but specifically, I don't know the details. Well, um, Diana can can he um, provide the information? We don't have it here either, as far as it uploaded on the file. Yeah. Diana can I move we if we don't have the information we can't vote on something. Hold on just a second, everybody. So, uh, like, can I can we confirm that the information is? I mean, it's on the agenda, but it, can we confirm that the information is not in the packet? I'm confirming. Could you uh, get the information from Diana? It's not. It's not in the packet. No, it jumped. That what's in the packet jumps from seven C to seven E. There is no seven D. Okay. No. Well, I think we're going to have to send this back anyway. Uh, regardless of who is present or not. Well, that's efficient. Um, uh, it, all right, so, well, okay, that, that's more or less taking care of itself. Um, that was 7D, so now we're moving on to environment and sustainability. Uh, Gwen, go ahead, please. Uh, so our regular meeting in July uh, was uh, strictly information. We did have a special meeting uh, just last week, um, and with uh, uh, a lot of uh, cooperative effort of, of the committee members, we managed to uh, approve um, and pass this and bring it to you. Um, and Pat would, uh, he should uh, take over on this to give you the information. Um, just so you know, this is a very early portion of the process on, on this particular issue. Um, there's there's many other steps, so this is just the NOP, and from with that, um, I believe that Diana is actually Pat now, so <laughs> he can take over and give you the information. Hi, can you hear me? You are live. Hey. Thank you. I think uh, Gwen could do this and Tom could do it uh, too, but I'm happy to uh, to do it. This is, uh, as, as Gwen noticed, this is a notice of preparation stage at which we have the opportunity to frame what it is that the draft environmental impact uh, report uh, will look at. The, um, they've, they've identified a number of uh, significant potential impacts uh, on it, and then some that we we are suggesting that they could add to it or explore in more detail. 
the first uh, in this one is that it doesn't include any project alternatives. Our project alternatives is a legal requirement for, for an EIR. And for some reason, they just didn't put any uh, in here. Later on in the comment letter, there's a citation to the particular section of the law that requires a statement of project alternatives. In this case, um, we are suggesting a project alternative that would take the truck trips, substantially all of the truck trips off of the uh, streets and by moving the product uh, out of the terminal by uh, rail car. Um, that is the same comment that, we, that we've made on the ECOSIM um, NOP project that came up a month or so ago uh, before the, uh, the council where they had 70,000 truck trips per year. This one estimates 40,000 truck trips per year. The second uh, section two talks about liquid bulk operations. <coughs> Excuse me. The NOP didn't identify chemical issues and, and pollution as a, as a problem, but um, it came to light in the ECHOSAM comment uh, process that some of these uh, imported projects products have substantial um, pollutants in them because of their refining process offshore, particularly chromium and copper and uh, sodium and uh, sulfur um, products. So we're suggesting to them that they evaluate the project products that they want to import uh, into this um, um, project. By the way, this project is a, an existing terminal called VOPAC. It's across um, the street from the ECOSEM proposed project area. It's already a tank farm and it has a, an enclosed um, a facility for, uh, for handling cement type of products. It's been vacant for a long time. They want to renew uh, bringing in com uh, cement kinds of um, uh, uh, products. They have to do the the terminal anyway to comply with some upgrade re requirements from the state called MOTEMS, M-O-T-E-M-S, that's standing for Marine Oil Terminal um, Project. So they have to redo the wharfs and so on. Now, on this project, they're also going to uh, change out some, uh, some pipelines to go about three miles to an inland um, tank farm. So that's on the liquid side. Mostly what they, they do is bunker fuel, but they also import jet fuel that's used by the, uh, the airlines at um, LAX. Um, so we've said here in this one, uh, on, the, on the bulk uh, liquid uh, projects, if you're, if you're replacing and, and changing your pipelines, take a look at the soil around them too and replace the, uh, you know, clean up the pollution. This is something that uh, the port probably should be doing every time they renew a long-term lease. And this one is a renewal for a 30 year period of time um, too. So there's, there's the pipeline areas and then there's a little triangular area up by the Banning's Landing. You can see it just before up the north, above the Northeast corner of the red highlighted area there. It's not highlighted now, but it's where their manifolds are and it's a heavily polluted area. We suggested to them that they should include that in their project and um, remove the pollution that's in the soil at that location. You hold that picture there and just come down a little bit so you can see the cement hopper trucks that are there in the upper right-hand corner. Those are the transportation trucks that are now, they're now proposing and they say uh, 20,000 round trips a year, that's 40,000 truck trips a year that'll come up Yacht Street, Dover Marina, and then up Avalon Boulevard um, elsewhere. So we're, we're suggesting, hey, there's an alternative, either to put an industrial sidetrack down Yacht Street that would serve both the ECOSAM project and the VOPAC project by putting and put the material into rail car um, cement hopper and then take them to the sidetracks that exist at the cement uh, mixing and batch plants elsewhere. Volpac also has a nine car rail line down through the middle of their uh, tank farm and they could extend that down to the cement plant pretty easily and do loading there. So it's not much of a project for them to um, consider doing um, 
uh, rail car alternatives uh, to, to uh, truck alternatives. <clears throat> Excuse me, Can we go back to the uh, comment letter. We didn't, we didn't really, we're not really proposing any comments on the reconstruction of the wharves or anything. It's pretty straightforward. And they said that there's gonna be impacts there, air quality and others, and they're going to study those. So, you know, we'll see what they say in their studies uh, before we go anything else. Now there's an, one up a little bit to the shared, uh, shared there, the shared use of birth 191. They need to straighten that out because ECHOSEM also has in its, project area also has birth 191. So um, they're not discussing in, in either uh, uh, either NOP, ECHOSAM or VOPAC, uh, how they're going to address the sharing of that birth and whether the impacts are, are additive. If they're additive and they appear to be, then you're talking about 110,000 uh, truck trips uh, uh, a year. And when you combine it with the container parking lot over on Gibson Boulevard, you're up to about 272,000 truck trips a year. Air quality impacts um, is um, mentioned here only because there's a special class of, of, of impacted um, people, you know, sensitive receptors, they're called. They're places where a lot of people go and there, there are sensitive um, facilities such as shipyards and, and other places of employment where you have to be kind of especially careful and address what the impact is going to be on those. The sensitive receptor we're suggesting here is the new Banning's, uh, Banning Park that's across the street from Banning's Landing Community Center. It's under construction right now. It's at the corner of Marina and Avalon. There's a, a railroad track that goes right across the north side of that. And it, it, it uh, contributes to significant idle time at that truck uh, crossing there where it crosses the train tracks. And the, the idle time is five or 10 minutes minimum every time a, a train uh, goes across that uh, crossing. So we're suggesting, hey, take a look and see on your air quality analysis whether you've got a sensitive receptor issue uh, there. Uh, calculating out the 110,000 truck trips per year passing by that spot we're with ECHOSIM and um, VOPAC. Five days, 10 hours a day work week here, about 43 cement hopper trucks an hour uh, that would be coming across that uh, particular um, crossing. So about one every minute and 15 seconds or so. Um, the growth inducing impacts is an important consideration. There's a closed cement plant on the east side of Wilmington. It closed when Portland uh, cement uh, stopped using the VOPAC facility. They've been paying rent on it um, ever since, like a, a tune of about a million dollars a month. Um, so somehow or another, maybe it's a response to VOPAC or to ECHOSIM's initiative to open a cement plant. VOPAC says they want to open the, theirs again. And if they do, that's probably going to lead to the opening of the cement plant the batch plant on the east side of Wilmington. If so, that is a growth inducing impact arising from VOPAC cement operations. And they, uh, they need to consider the impacts of doing that uh, in, their, um, their, in their EIR. The last section just discusses the project alternatives and that's the uh, industrial sidetrack um, uh, stuff. We, the last sentence here was pointed out, hey, look, you know, consideration of alternatives at this point in the process matters because a preferred alternative gets the most study. Usually alternatives are mentioned in one sentence and that's it. So if, if they adopt the rail tracks as the alternative to truck travel and so forth, it's the one that'll get the most study. And so we're asking them to consider doing that too. That's pretty much it. Any questions anybody has, we're glad to respond as best I can. Sure, I see Gwen and then I have one of my own. Uh, mine, mine is just to supplement uh, Pat's uh, presentation. So once again, this board had uh, already uh, voted on uh, a letter of comments for the ECOSEM uh, uh, project itself. That's once again, a new type of uh, uh, ecologically friendly cement process. Uh, there are concerns for our location specifically, there are still drawbacks to the actual cement site in the port. It's not 
it, it's not entirely um, uh, eco-friendly to anybody who's near that, that location. But uh, the, 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 cement, the cement process itself is going to um, tremendously impact uh, positively greenhouse gases um, uh, in the environment globally um, going to this particular type of process. But for us locally, we already made that comment, particularly on that process. And this letter is talking about the site, the siting of it in relation to that and the, the other site, which is uh, the liquid the liquid site. So, um, and, and the NOP process, I probably I believe that Alex letter um, if if the uh, if uh, uh, um, Metro had uh, allowed uh, the community to speak in the NOP process of their EIR there would be a lot less questions that we would have had to go through and you know uh, wonder about what's going on with their with their thing anyway thank you I hope that that helped just kind of give an overview. Thanks, Gwen. Yeah, and just for my own personal comment, uh, I, I would just say I, I uh, would like to I don't know, approve of and, and uh, reinforce the notion that the uh, rail option is something that we should probably push for in general uh, in the port complex. A, a lot of the larger terminals um, are pushing because there is really just kind of a, a hard ceiling on how much more road traffic can be tolerated. Um, just recently, the 710 widening was uh, scrapped for those reasons. It's got a lot of community pushback for obvious reasons. Um, and even if it hadn't been, there's simply just an upper limit to how many trucks you can get through the area. So the, the development push is really for uh, on dock rail or other rail service in and out of the port area. And so anything that we could do to encourage um, the more efficient, faster, cleaner option, I think would probably be, you know, if, if we show support for that, as Pat was saying, that'll get the most study. And it seems to be what a lot of the other uh, logistics uh, chains are, are pushing. And this is kind of part of an overall broad spectrum effort to get things moving faster and more reliably. So uh, doubling down on trucks uh, doesn't seem to be uh, very forward looking. Do we have any other uh, questions or comments? All right, would someone like to move to uh, call, or actually this is not a committee, right? I almost did it again. Yes, it's uh, not a committee. Call for the vote there. We can go ahead and call for the vote, please. Okay, John Barbera. Yes. Vic Christensen, I, Dan Dixon. Yes. Craig Goldfarb. Abstain. Cynthia Gagne. You're muted. Yes. Gwen Henry. Aye. Melanie Lebrecht. Yes. Kelly Miller. Yes. Alec Norman. Yes. Thomas Norman. Yes. Adrian Nita Reyes Cruz. Yes. David Samperio. Yes. Angela Sumner. Yes. Chris Valle. Yes. Okay, that would be 13 ayes and one abstention. All right, and the motion is carried. Um, so we are uh, at the end of our motion section, uh, number seven, and we would like to circle back to the items from the consent calendar that were pushed. And I believe those were um, B and C. Correct. So was there any further discussion before we vote on, uh, and are, do we need to take those separately or can we do B and C together? Oh, uh, go ahead, Greg. The, you have to take them separately. They're separate motions. Understood. All right, okay. uh, so on item 6B, which is the Committee and Liaison Appointments, the Modification of Standing Rules. Any, were there any comments or questions? Oh, uh, go ahead, Greg. Yeah, I just wanted to explain. I removed that because you were we could you're appointing an ad hoc committee before you voted on the having the board participate in the gotcha. this event. 
Right. So it was, it should have been, the vent should have been first before the ad hoc committee. Makes sense. Uh, all right, so um, with that in mind. Uh, that, you know, is that, uh, that is actually 6C, not 6B. I'm sorry. Um, oh, right, right, uh, right. So although the point is well taken. Um, so on 6B then, um, are we ready for the uh, the vote on that? Okay, I'll go ahead, Greg. Go ahead, Greg. Did, or did you? Okay, you... okay. I, I, I was calling it up. So I I read this over and I was thinking, I was looking at it. First of all, it's really inappropriate to make to change the make a, a significant change to the standing rules without putting it in the agenda. And the significant change in the standing rules is combining sustainability and um, uh, the port committee. I was asked to serve, a, I was asked by a couple of people to serve on the port committee, but I didn't want to serve on the sustainability committee. Uh, that you combined it puts me in, the, in a situation where I don't think that they're the same thing and I and though they they um for some reason uh we haven't been having port committee meetings and taking up proper the proper discussion of the port committee I would I would protest that those committees are being combined and would like to suggest that we separate them again and come up with appropriate committees and a reinstate having regular port committee meetings instead of trying to put everything into sustainability. And I apologize because I was unable to attend the uh, executive committee meeting at which that was moved. So maybe Victor can shed some light on that for us. Well, I, I don't know about shedding light on the reason for combining. My comment was about what Craig said about uh, it not being on the agenda, and it is on the agenda, both the um, appointment, you know, the committee and liaison appointments, which includes the combination of the two committees, and the modification of the standing rules accordingly. So both of them are there. Um, I, if, if that was part of your point, um, then that has already been addressed. It was not clearly put in the in the agenda. All it said was, "Oh, this is what we're going to do." No, it says approve. It did not say that we're, we were changing the bylaws. What, what Excuse me, I am talking. It says approve committee and liaison appointments and modify standing rules accordingly. That's pretty straightforward. All right. Well. Um... So let's take some other comments. I, I, I'm sorry, because a bunch of people came at the same time. I'm just going to go uh, left to right. Uh, David Samperio, please. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah, I'm not sure why the Port and Environmental Sustainability were put together also. I know we don't, I, I'm part of the Port Committee, and we hadn't had any means the last so many months for whatever reasons. Um, and I just think that it's uh, being, you know, working down on the ports and a lot of the things that are happening um, I think it's 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 uh, reasonable to say it could stand alone by itself. Um, uh, now that we have a new chair, some other. I mean, I, I think we can. Um, again, I don't know why they were combined, but I would move to um, have it be a standalone, um, the port committee, and and that's uh, that's that. that's what I say. Yeah. Oh, that's what I. That's not what I say. That's what I. Uh, that's my opinion on it. Understood. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, okay, uh, Thomas Norman, go ahead, please. Yeah, no, I wanted to speak. I have a little bit of a sense of of what's going on, but I, I think it's important the whole this be discussed. Uh, you know, at this group, at this larger body, and um, exact report out. So was approached by our our new leader. Um, you know, about would I be willing to serve as a, a chair of a combined committee and express some concern being uh, junior and especially given um, Gwen has served as, as a chair and, you know, being uncomfortable being asked to go. But, uh, you know, did agree that I, you know, I've got 
probably pretty good agenda creating skills and you know a willingness to serve you know in terms of the rationale the the thing that i thought sounded somewhat sort of most persuasive serving on both is the difficulty sometimes getting uh you know getting a quorum and then the uh similarity of a lot of the material that have been produced by the committees in the my one year of, of attendance a lot of these have been environmental uh, sustainability um, focused and then the existence of these cross san pedro and sometimes you know wilmington uh you know port and sustainability uh groups that are meeting and, and having uh subgroups meet afterwards so i thought you know listening to some more senior members their you know their ideas sounded good and i was willing to um help out uh, to make sure we run efficiently and we don't just have tons of meetings for the sake of having meetings but i'm very interested in what everyone on the call has to say about about the, the wisdom you know of that uh the, the biggest thing to keep in mind is is the importance of uh, you know making sure we, we can you know have a a functioning group for each of these so we don't have one committee not meet because that was surprising to me too that we you know, suddenly wasn't getting invites to the port committee for uh for months so that that's the perspective i can share and uh, uh perhaps some others can give some more feedback very good thank you thomas and uh i'll have cynthia up next please You're still muted. Cynthia, you're still muted. Thanks. All right. I've been on the port committee ever since I've been on the board. And I totally agree with Craig that it has to be separated from sustainability. A lot of the things do bleed over from one committee to the other. But the port has a contract, a formal contract with the city that makes the port committee a separate entity. And within our standing rules, we're supposed to have a port committee. It doesn't say port in land use or port in executive or port in sustainability. It says port committee. And we do have some crossover with the um, I guess pollution or whatever you want to call it, because we have the light, the noise and the air pollution, but we also have a whole economic international trade issue that we have to discuss. And you just can't mix up sustainability and international trade because you can see what the trade is doing right now with, you know, giving us inflation, giving us goods that we can't get to our uh, into our port and into the um, people's hands. So I think it has to be separate. If we don't, we're just going to wash it off. And I know being on the port committee, our prior president said that we weren't interested in having a meeting. We said we didn't want to have one. And that wasn't true. I kept telling him we wanted a meeting and I wanted a meeting and he kept canceling it. So we need to have a separate port committee for sure. Or otherwise, we're going to wash it up and it'll be a nothing. <laughs> And Excellent. we're a port city. We need to support our port with a port committee. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Dan Dixon, go ahead, please. Sorry. I agree with uh, Cynthia and Craig. These are both incredibly important and gigantic areas of interest to San Pedro and to the whole region. And uh, I, I think each uh, faces serious issues that require a lot of energy to work out and resolve. And I do think there's a lot of crossover uh, and, and that needs to be looked at maybe with uh, uh, joint ad hoc committees to, to, to work on the, the two that mesh together. But I think it's really important to keep them separate. And uh, Cynthia's argument about uh, it's in the bylaws, it needs to stay there. It's very important. Thank you, Dan. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of a jog to the right, and we do have two uh, hands up in attendees, and I know one's been up for a moment, so I'm going to go ahead and allow Lori Jacobs to talk. Go ahead, Lori. Oh, thank you, Chris. I think this is a refreshing, very interesting idea. Quite a few port issues are environmental. Quite a few of the, the sustainability issues um, are involved with the port. 
And I think this will now give us a stronger voice, more expertise on both subjects working together. Um, as far as some of the comments that Cynthia was made, you know, we're, we're looking at the harbor area. We're not looking at the world. We're not looking globally. We need to know how the port is functioning here. And neither committee has been that functional in the last couple of years. It's sustainability mainly because um, the difficulty in getting enough people to attend. And so I think combining the expertise with both is very innovative. And I think we should give it a try before we poo poo it because it's not working the way it is. And I love the idea of Thomas Norman having somebody who hasn't chaired a committee now steading, stepping up in a leadership role. We need to see more of the newer board members stepping up in leadership roles. Um, I, I'm disappointed that anybody wants to maintain something that hasn't really been working. Why don't we give it a shot? Why don't we um, take a look at this, give them a few meetings to work together and see how it works. We can always undo them later but I really think this is a very innovative idea and I'd like to see the board support this. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. What we're gonna do is go to Melanie and then uh, Pat slash Diana, then Gwen. Um, that'll take us full lap. And I see David, you have your hand up. So we'll make you the last uh, comment on that. So please go ahead, Melanie. Yeah, just to enlighten, because I was at the executive board meeting and kind of had, had talked to Ray about the committees. And one of the reasons why he did this is because the port were just, you know, stepping in as president now and trying to just re, you know, the both committees and having lack of participation, you know, and sustainability and having no port committee meetings and having the issues it felt like he felt like giving it an oomph again and new fresh leadership with Thomas being chair and partnering them together because there's a lot of air quality and all sustainability stuff coming out of the port. And so having, you know, them combine would give fresh new oomph to both committees. And I think that's where he was going. And like Lori said, try it and see what happens and, you know, and combine effort. There's great people all together with the committees both together. It makes a solid committee of it being joined of people. So it might be worth it just to give it a shot. It can always go back if it's not working. Thank you, Melly. Uh, and now uh, to the Nave household, please. You're going to get both of us on this one again. Um, I'm reminded of when we decided to combine the outreach committee and the youth committee, which seemed like two very different committees with two very different agendas. But the result was a much stronger committee. And there was a lot of overlap that they found. And I think it's worked very well in that case. So I just wanted to share that. It's my turn. I know that I'm looking at the composition of the committee and uh, Tom is on there and he's already on the port committee. I'm there, Cynthia, Jason Herring, Craig Goldfarb, Dave Samperio, all on the port committee. It's the majority of the group. It does start with port slash environment and sustainability. So I don't see the issue about um, uh, what the uh, port committee people would be concerned about. In terms of efficiency, I'm gonna follow up on a, on a couple of things that Tom said and, and that um, uh, Melanie and that uh, Lori uh, said, yeah, there's, there's stuff that, that comes up in issues committee like the DFSP, dense fuel supply thing. It comes up in uh, planning and land use, port um, impacts, comes up in sustainability environment, it comes up in port committees. But look, we've a good portion of what we've been doing over the last nine months or actually the last year has been comments on port projects. They are on a, a very accelerated uh, project um, schedule. We're gonna see a bunch more of these coming down the line and we've gotta be able to find a way to get our comments in. And it has been a battle finding a committee to take these, that meets that we can take these comments to. I've had to take these things to the executive committee 
to sustainability committee, to port committee, to joint sustainability committee, sometimes to um, the planning and land use committee. Uh, I, I'm very, very narrow point of view here. And that is I want a committee that actually meets and works and is willing to work and read these things. These are not easy documents to read. They take some time and they have to work on them. I don't want to spend my time trying to find a, a committee to, to take them to. Diana's tapping me on, on the arm to shut up, so I'm going to shut up. <laughs> well, well taken, and thank you very much. Um, OK, we're going to go to Gwen. I also see David. Uh, so for our last three comments, please, so we, we still have um, this motion to vote on, another to consider, and report. So please uh, make your comments uh, brief. Go ahead, uh, Gwen. As as Pat had said, uh, the first word in this new committee is port. Um, now, ever since I've been involved with environment and sustainability, um, I have also attended, and, and Cynthia would acknowledge this, uh, as many port committees as I could because they are interlinked. And I, I, I believe that even though I was not a committee member, I could provide some input. Um, from the beginning, the Clean Air Action Plan uh, actually ended up uh, in environment and sustainability. Uh, but, but it was with the uh, collaboration of the Port Committee at the time. So um, there, there is a lot of cross-pollination here. I, I do believe that, that the, now, now in regards to the, the enormity of this, now um, uh, Cynthia mentioned that that you know this is all about local well I, I beg to differ everything that's been coming up um, regarding the environment like the green hub and everything that is specifically port and the port committee needs to know about these things and they are coming out of uh, sustainability and there is a lot of information that would benefit the port uh, committee in knowing about some of these big global things that our this port this port is taking the leadership globally on some things. And, and there's a lot of cross-pollination. And there is too much information. David Samperio comes from the, the, the actual hands-on um, impact of port workers. And those, those things are directly connected to global pressures and, and larger pressures that that we need to collaborate. There's way too many things for us to do. There is a port commission meeting that I think that there, that we're we're ignoring. There's the port president's meeting that needs needs a responsible uh, a group of people to to um, attend and then come back to to the um, group. Now, in regards to those separate things where it's strictly port and maybe labor or something like that, and where environment does not have any any um, say in this or have any input, there's ad hoc committees. There are going to be environmental things that will be an ad hoc committee that, for example, there is one item on the upcoming agenda that uh, will not be part of the port environment thing. There will be a light hand. but uh, with that, I think that us together, we have let many hands, and there are way too many hour, very long meetings to go to, and yes, um, too few hands. Uh, so I, I, I strongly believe, I have yielded to, to Thomas because he is, uh, he, he's, he's a very good organizer, uh, taking the leadership in the port, that's not my thing. That's why I'm taking the vice chair. This is, it's because the port is that important. But ever since I've been part of the Environment and Sustainability Committee, there's been a lot of things that that have benefited a thing, a conversations. Yeah, you get the idea. All right, thank you. Uh, thanks. Uh, David, uh, go ahead, please. Uh, yes, no, I think a lot of great things have been said here. Uh, um, and and I, I agree with some, some I, uh, I believe when it was said that it's uh, it's not it's local it's not international. No, we we deal with nine different uh, the major nine major uh, port um, terminals are all foreign based. Uh, they want to replace us with automation um, and pr pretty much get rid of labor. Which um, I think we know right now the ILW is 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 a um, economic uh, 
uh, engine here, not just us, but all the jobs that are related to the ports. So it's, it's, it's local, but at the same time, it's international. But I do agree that the last so many months, um, there was reasons why we weren't meeting. I think some of the players have changed. So I think that if, uh, like Lori mentioned and some other people mentioned, if we, if we do combine them, and it, it seems like that's what it is, and we try it for a month or two or a quarter or whatever it is, I think maybe, um, uh, like you said, it, it builds that uh, people getting involved, uh, there's discussion, uh, things like that, and, and, and maybe in a few months or whatever it is that it breaks off again to its own separate um, committee. Um, I, I'm, I'm more than willing to do that. I just know that something has to be done because uh, the last so many months there has been no port committee meetings and, and nothing has been said. Um, I am part of the executive board. I'm chairman of the stewards and membership committee. We just let in uh, 600, another 155 new ID memberships. So our, 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 our membership is growing. Um, there's a lot of things, okay, just on my wheelhouse, uh, but there's a lot of different, like you said, with, with Gwen about environmental, um, being um, um, a leader in, in, in the world when it comes to that here in, in California and here in the, the local port. So I, I absolutely believe that something has to be done. And if it means we combine them for a few months and we see that there is movement, there is growth, there is discussion, and we break off in a couple of months, then at least it's better than what's been happening last so many months. So um, I, I'll yield the floor. Thanks very much. Yeah, I just very quickly, I would tend to agree. If it's a mistake, then let it be a novel mistake. We'll see what happens. Uh, Craig, we're going to let you go ahead and have the last word on this. Go ahead. Okay. One, I mean, I, this, I, we were having regular meetings and when I was co-chair of the committee and the moment I was removed from co-chair of the committee, the meeting stopped. So that wasn't one of the reasons. The other, re, the other stuff with Pat, uh, points out of what he was doing was when he didn't get traction in the, the port committee, he shopped to other committees. It's really a, a, a bad practice and uh, shows a lot of a lack of concern of the com community and the committee process. The reason that a port has a lot more, a lot different um, over the, there is some overlapping in some of the sustainability stuff, but sustainability was never been able to sustain itself. Um, and that and that is probably I would put on who's been chairing the 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 committee. Um, I was asked several times to serve on the committee and I would I would I didn't want to be on that committee. I still don't want to be on sustainability and I want to be on port. I know a lot about the port. I deal a lot with the port and I think that it's keeping them keeping them together, uh, putting them together is not a novel idea, but is a way to um, is just a way to try and get um, more interest in sustainability when I'm I personally am not interested in it. And then my statement. Thank you. Uh, all right. And um, I'll vote. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'll, Pat, I'll let you go ahead since you mentioned you uh, by name. Well, I actually, I took, <clears throat> I put my hand down uh, um, again. Uh, again, you know, we've, we've talked about this. There's, there's not much uh, that Craig said that I agree with factually, but that's another story. Let's, uh, let's take the vote and, and move on. Thanks very much. I tend to agree. Um, let's take the vote, please. Okay. Point of order. Um, oh, we had we had a motion to separate them, and which was seconded. So are we voting on that, and then voting on the main motion? Oh, I'm sorry, a motion to separate what? David Sampero made the motion. Oh, which I second. The two, the two that were pushed back uh, to separate uh, the, uh, the committees. Oh. Yeah, well, this is the motion to separate the committees, right? We were, that's the main motion on the floor. Mm -hmm. I thought that's what the- oh, I'm sorry, you're breaking up a lot. Does yeah. everyone got the noise in back mute, please? Uh, yeah, if you're, if you haven't been recognized, please mute yourself. Oh, gotcha. Uh, I think I got it. Um, yeah, no, I'm sorry, maybe there's a little confusion. I thought that, oh, Craig, what, which motion are you referring to? Okay, we we made, made a motion when we were talking. David made the motion to separate the committees. I second to that motion. So, 
Oh, I'm sorry. Um, that I'm actually. Is that not simply a no vote on the motion to combine to approve the combination? I mean, if if we're you, already you've got some... several motions in well, here, you oh, got pick just, committee just, members, just and you got moment, you've got several committees all on this one sheet. You probably need to move that committee off the sheet to vote on it separately. Wait, point of order. It seems okay. to me that the state of you're not a board member. You can't call port of order. All right. Well, I'll just make my comment then. The state of things we haven't been recognized either. The appropriate. Wait, so so all right, everybody stop. Mute yourselves, please. I'm asking for one person. In fact, let me just ask uh, uh let me call on Thomas Norman. I'm asking for you to help me clarify which stage of the conversation we're in. Now we had a motion that the the uh item oh. Excuse me for just a moment. Item seven E one. Oh no, I'm sorry. That's the vote pack. I, I'm uh, I'm spinning here. Six um, B. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Six B. I scrolled down too far. So, uh, we had a motion to separate the uh, combination of the committees from the overall item six B, which was to have them. Together. So, is that am I correct in that that we uh, that there was a motion and a second to remove the issue of the committee combination from six B and then to deal with that uh, separately from the uh, liaison appointments and the standing rules. Is that correct? My, my, my recommendation, no, what, Chris. Uh, what, this, this was directed to Thomas. Okay. Yeah, yeah. My my recommendation is there was that, but that that might not have been an order at this point. So I think you'd be wise to take a motion to separate that item and then we can vote on separating the committees or not. And uh, it will we'll make such such a motion to uh, remove the port environmental sustainability portion from um, the appointment of, of chairs and members so we can vote on the, the remainder of this document, you know, up or down and then then visit that and, and look at the amendment uh, proposed by David Samperio. Thank you. That's what I was looking for. All right. So we did have a motion in a second to consider remove to, to oh, no, no, no second though. So, so we need seconding. Oh. oh well, I thought Craig had moved in or David and Craig had David moved. had moved and I seconded. Right. So why don't we deal with that one? And that is to separate the issue of the committee combination from the larger. So why don't we uh call the vote on that one? Okay, just to clarify, this is to take out the entire issue of the combination of the two committees from the overall list of the com committee appointments, uh, committee and liaison appointments. That's correct. Okay, John Barbera. No. Vic Christensen, aye. Dan Dixon. Yes. Oh. Is that a question? Yeah, it is. But that go on. <laughs> okay. Move ahead. Craig, Craig Goldfarb. Yes. Cynthia Gagne. This is to separate the port committee thing. You're and we're just voting on the other ones or to separate it. This is right. to, this is the vote to separate that issue, the, the combination okay. issue by itself. Yes. This, this is basically to remove the combination from the overall list. Then so we will vote on the list. Not voting on the list yet. We're just right. voting Correct. on that partial list. Okay, I want it separated. Yes. Gwen Henry. Aye. Melanie Lebrecht. Yes. Kelly Miller. How I have a question. How are we voting to separate something that we haven't put together yet, or we haven't put together? No, no. We are <laughs> we are separating the decision on whether to combine the two committees. We're just taking that block of text out, so to speak, from the overall list of committee appointments. And then we're going to vote on whether we're going to combine them? That's correct. Correct. We're going to deal with that issue separately. from. We'll the deal list. with the two separately, the overall list that's left and the combination of these two committees separately. Okay, then yes. Alec Norman. No. Thomas Norman. Yes. Uh, Adrian Nieder Reyes Cruz. Yes. David Samperio. Yes. 
Angela Sumner. Yes. Chris Valle. Yes, please. <laughs> okay, that's, uh, oh geez, what do we have? We have uh, 12, 12 ayes and two nays. All right, and so that motion carries. And so may we then proceed to the, are we going to consider that issue or are we gonna go back to the uh, 6B? Or do the whole list, Chris, and then go back to it. Okay. Yeah, do, the, do the easy list. Right, All right, yeah. thank you. Uh, so um, item 6B, the approval of committee and liaison appointments and the modification of standing rules accordingly with the exception of the committee combination issue. Hang on a minute. Sure. Everybody just take a deep cleansing breath. <laughs> okay. So as, as Chris said, this is for the re this is for the rest of the overall list minus the port and sustainability committee combination issue. John Barbera. Yes. Vic Christensen, I. Dan Dixon. Yes. Craig Goldfarb. Yes. Cynthia Gagne. Yes. Gwen Henry. Aye. Melanie Lebrecht. Yes. Kelly Miller. Yes. Alec Norman. Yes. Thomas Norman. Yes. Adrienne Ederez Cruz. Yes. David Samperio. Yes. Angela Sumner. Yes. Chris Valle. Yes. Okay, 14 ayes, zero nays. All right, and that motion is carried. Now, um, to circle back and consider the combination of the sustainability and port committees into a new unified committee. And um, considering the amount of discussion that's happened on the topic already, uh, I'd like to abbreviate that and without objection, go straight to the vote on this issue, which I think we've all kind of, we've all landed on our respective positions. Point of order. Uh, go ahead, please. Um, are we voting to separate the committees or are we voting? We are voting whether or not to approve the combination. So the combination has been proposed and we are voting as to whether we agree that that should happen or not. So Chris, so I think I think yes what he's asking is what a yes vote means oh, and what a no a, vote means. A yes vote would mean that the committees would be combined and a no vote would mean that they would remain separate. That is the best of my understanding. If, if that's not correct, Craig, in my interpretation, then go ahead and, and clarify. But I think that's what you were saying. Yeah, that's what I was trying to ask. I, I just want to know, yes vote says combine the committee. No vote would be... Um, that we Leave would them. separate the committees, but then we'd have to set it back. Right, yeah, I guess that would mean, yes, it would be sent back to the, they, okay. they, they would, yeah, no, no means yeah. they would be combined and it have to be reworked, I guess. Reconstituted, okay. All right, yeah. thank you. Um, okay. And we the have Tom, a hands. Yeah, uh, so uh, Thomas, go ahead. I just, just wanted to, I'm glad we, we got there because yeah, I think it's it's best to deal with the issue of changing the bylaws first and then wanted to know that there was a hand raised. Yes, okay, uh, and uh, go ahead, Naves. Did you have a uh, comment? Pat or Diana, we can't hear you. They're not muted. Uh, no, oh. the raised hand was uh, in error. Oh. Okay. okay. Uh, but I would say it's not a bylaws change. It's a change to the standing rules only. Correct. I was going to mention that too. Hey, thanks. Thanks very much. All right. So we proceed then. And uh, again, time check, it is uh, 9 p.m. and 30 seconds. So uh, if possible, I'd like to do an abbreviated and yet complete uh, rest of our agenda. So let's uh, crack the whip on this. Take the vote. Okay, so this, just to clarify again, a yes vote on this means we do, uh, we do combine the port and sustainability committees. A no vote means we do not combine them and it basically gets sent back to committee. Chris, we have a hand, but we're in the middle of voting. So we're just about to start. What do you wanna do? Uh, very quickly, Gwen. Uh, no, this is immediately after the vote. Okay, that, that's fine. 
Okay, so John Barbera. Yes. Vic Christensen, I. Dan Dixon. No. Craig Gold. Sorry. Yeah, Craig Goldfarb. No. Cynthia Gagne. No. Gwen Henry. Gwen Henry. Uh, I. Melanie Lebrecht. Yes. Kelly Miller. Yes. Alec Norman. Abstain. Thomas Norman. Yes. Adrian Reyes Cruz. Yes. David Samperio. No. Angela Sumner. Yes. Chris Valle. Yes. Okay, we have nine eyes, four nays, and one abstention. Uh, Chris, I don't think you're, yeah, I think you're muted. I am. Oh, uh, you had a comment? Yes. Uh, so, so uh, uh, do remember we have a, uh, a now uh, this is in transition, but we have an environment and sustainability uh, meeting. The first point of uh, discussion will be how to go about organizing this. That will be the main discussion. Um, you might want to actually hold this for the re for your report section. Okay. All right. Um, uh, go ahead, David. Well, as much as I'd like to stay here, I do have to go to work. It's Understood. nine o'clock. Um, yeah, but um, just want to say I, I just think this is a great big group of people. Um, if we all just went one way or the other way, uh, I don't necessarily think that's a good thing. So some of the uh, when when we uh, disagree, I think that's not a bad thing. Um, so uh, as long as we're doing what's right for the community, I think that's what uh, is most important. And uh, so we just have different ways of going about it. Um, but anyways, just with that, I want to say uh, I'll be working till three o'clock. You guys have a good sleep. <laughs> I'll talk to you guys later. Oh, man. Uh, Stay safe out there. And thanks very yes. much. Yes, I will. Take care. Very good. Actually, and that's a very good point. Um, so uh, having dispensed with all of our motions. We haven't, Chris. We, oh, we still have, have to do the ad hoc group vote. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you're right. Uh, let's, well, again, is there, please say no, any additional comment or question on the uh, appointment of the ad hoc committee? Oh, I was muted. Uh, is there any additional uh, uh, comment or question? Oh, okay. Uh, Thomas, go ahead. Just wanted to clarify for the person taking the notes that I'm presuming the last vote was not just about the um, combining the committees, but it was combining the committees and accepting the roster of members as listed. Yes. Or do we have to vote for that specifically? No, I think, yeah, those were combined. Yes, that that included the roster as listed, which was a combination of the two rosters from the previously individual committees. Just wanted to make sure that was in the minute. So, so yeah. I know the members appreciate it all right and so uh is there any uh discussion uh on the um the uh, ad hoc committee for of uh, the peck park group uh melly um this committee was derived from the president the president selected the committee Public safety was put in charge of doing this. And the way that Ray selected the people were he wanted outreach involved and issues involved. So the chairs from outreach and issues were appointed. And then they took and put two members from each group in. You know, public safety is running it, so the public safety committee is on it. And then issues committee had a representative, and then also outreach had a representative and to combine into it and Ray selected the people that were appointed as he can do as president, he can select an ad hoc committee and appoint it. So that's the way that that was done. Thank you. And uh, Thomas? Yeah, and, and as a member of the community who was stuck in his house, locked in his house from four o'clock until the next morning after the shooting, I just wanted to thank those who volunteered to serve and express my support for creating the committee and 
want to see the members of the community, you know, go back to the park and, um, you know, continue to put pressure on um, encouraging our law enforcement folks to be there so people feel safe and take advantage of that resource. And, and I call the question if there's no other hands. Very good. Let's uh, call a question, please. Okay, John Barbera. Yes. Vic Christensen, aye. Dan Dixon. Yes. Craig Goldfarb. Yes. Cynthia Gagne. Abstain. Gwen Henry. Aye. Melanie Lebrecht. Yes. Kelly Miller. Yes. Alec Norman. Abstain. Thomas Norman. Yes. Adrian Reyes Cruz. Yes. Angela Sumner. Yes. Chris Valle. Yes. That's uh, 11 ayes, two abstentions. And the motion is carried. The committee has been created. Um, and I'm sure we will hear very shortly. Uh, we should um, take that up ASAP. Um, time is of the essence. Speaking of which, um, we are now moving into our uh, updates and reports section. Um, again, it is 9.07 Pacific Standard Time. So please, uh, as we try to move through our uh, reports, make whatever comments you need to make in about a minute or so. I'd like to try and get us out of here uh, no later than quarter after and still get it all done. So um, Melanie, uh, do you have an Empower LA EVG update for us? So we have been, they did a bonk report. I don't know what came out of it and also the surveys. We have a meeting on the 12th where we reconvene and we'll get all the statistics as to that whole weird survey that they sent out as to what came out of it and also find out exactly what bonk said and where we go from here as to what they want from us going forward. So we'll be into phase two of this whole thing. And that's where they start selecting who's gonna be the test candidates for um, the pilot program and all of that too. We'll start doing that. Thanks very much. Uh, I have no knowledge of the president's meeting with the court. Uh, it's obviously Ray's item. Um, we don't have anybody with better knowledge than mine. Okay, we will skip item nine. Uh, committee reports. Um, we actually, in the future, we need to change our boilerplate because to the, oh, it says the items could result in motion, motions and interactions, but we have already separated our motions. Uh, um, so a uh, budget and finance report, Melanie, and go ahead and wrap public safety in with that. And you're muted. There's no budget and finance report, public safety. We, um, Basically, here's the report. We, um, we were approached by a program called SAVE to do a Zoom seminar, but it, it's $2,000 for it. And we felt with, um, it's too early in the fiscal year to spend that kind of money on a Zoom seminar. And so move that down the pipeline and you know, further in the spring to see what money we have left in our budget and if it's feasible to do it. Um, we made the motion, came up to have uh, the pet park incident forum on September 19th. And we, um, Ray came to our meeting and gave an overview of everything that happened at the pet park meeting that they had in the press conference. Um, street vendors are all gone. They removed them due to ADA compliance of the um, sidewalk, the one over on Capitol in front of Target, they were and pouring grease into the drain and all that. They finally got them on a bunch of violations and stuff. That storm drain is messed up enough without grease being poured in it. Um, yeah, they, um, the fireworks, they were really non-responsive about at CPAB. They said that they did the best that they could and they're still working out problems with being able to respond when people call in the fireworks and stuff. Um, we're looking at trying with sustainability with all the money we spent on right before COVID on the Wild Fest and the um, emergency preparedness fair. We've got all the stuff still itself. We'll have to reprint banners and flyers, but to do this again, 
we've got everything, all the framework all done. We just have to reach out to everybody again and do it. But the thought process is to do this in Peck Park and not up on the hill. We need to revitalize Peck Park and bring positive, positive engagements of people there and bring some positive events there and work with them to get, you know, things like emergency preparedness and wild fest would be great to have there to um, have a lot of people come and it'd be great to work with the park to revitalize it too. So that's it for that. And then CPAB, where is it? I don't even see it on here. Well, it's CPAB is up there on the reports and I don't see it on this thing for some reason. Vic, did you have a comment? Yes, very quick. Um, just to follow up on the, the street vendors, the ones that used to be at the Amelia Westmont intersection also have been gone for quite a while. I don't know if it's for the same reasons, but I'm not complaining. Yeah, there we go. Here it is. So CPAB, I actually went physically to it. Um, and they had a couple of presentations from GRID, GRID or GRID, it's G-R-Y-D, and it's the Youth Gang Reduction Program. Harbor area is one of the zones that's like a uh, gang-like area where GRID has, we're part of their area. They said that, um, we, there are 23 zones in Los Angeles and we're one of them. Um, Toberman is like the resource center for gang intervention, which I was, I didn't know that. Um, Harbor Lights is their um, volunteer program with the police and they're looking for membership and now they've opened it up to men and they're experiencing a lot of attrition due to age and illness. And so they're looking for more members. Um, right here, the captain discussed fireworks and just, they said that our area right now is, um, robberies are on an uptake and in within robberies, they include shoplifting. And there's been a lot of shoplifting in our area and a lot at Target. Um, and if they don't catch them, they consider them robberies. Um, violent crime. Point of order. Point of order. We uh, are going uh, across time. Is it is everything that you're mentioning uh, in your report, or is there anything that you could develop uh, beyond what it, we can possibly read in the report? Yeah. Um, they, but mostly like right here, the, uh, the burglary of cars, bikes are up. So one thing that they said was make sure again, lock your cars, don't leave valuable property in it. There's been a lot in our area with that. And that's it. Thanks very much. Uh, all right, um, let's move then to, uh, uh, do we have a, a report from planning and land use? I'm sorry, uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, executive committee report. Uh, do Mel or um, Vic, do you guys have a? No, okay. Nothing. Very good. Uh, as far as youth and outreach, can we pull that up for me, uh, please? Um, we had a very good, on, and this is an ongoing discussion within youth and outreach. Bottom line, um, I had some ideas about um, broadening the slightly broadening the mission statement of youth and outreach and turning it into really what would be a communications department for any other public. Uh, entity. Uh, I, a lot of my professional life I spend uh, working with communications departments for elected officials and it just dawned on me that we are elected officials and there's no reason we couldn't or shouldn't be doing what they do in terms of talking about the information that they have access to and the work that they're doing. So um, this is all coming down to the idea of making what are essentially public service announcements, um, either graphics or uh, actual video segments, 30 to 60 seconds, uh, including people in the community, board members, committee members. And so what I would like to do as I have in the past is if you are on a committee, if you have an issue, something coming out of issues or your committee, um, 
all you need to do is give me an elevator pitch or uh, some bullet points, an idea of like, you know, uh, what about people who are blowing through stop signs? Um, Lori uh, mentioned the 988 uh, uh, mental health uh, crisis line. So those are all things that we could, with, a, you know, a, an hour or two of uh, volunteer time meeting me somewhere, we could do someone speaking to camera with a short script. Uh, we have some B-roll of related, you know, imagery, and we put that Insta on Instagram, we put that on Facebook. And rather than waiting for uh, two to three times a year when we can uh, encapsulate something into uh, the print newsletter, we can take a couple hours or maybe once a month um, to stop and put something together in a, in a mode that people are more, that's more attention getting. And uh, in terms of speaking to youth, something that if it's, if it's on Instagram or, or Facebook, uh, people will be a lot more likely to watch a short video than to uh, go grab a newsletter and read through to page three or four uh, to spend the same amount of time getting information that could be, you know, six to eight months old when they when they get it. So uh, this is something I have the ability to contribute directly to. So uh, right now, what I'd like to have you do is uh, just submit ideas to me. If you send me a text or an email, hey, you know, what about this? Could we say something about X, Y, and Z? Uh, I will turn it into a pitch that we will try and develop within the Youth and Outreach Committee. And we also look at it as a way um, of attracting new uh, membership and more volunteers to the, the board and to the committees as well. People, when you tell them that, you know, we'd like you to be responsible uh, to and for your community, you know, may turn some people off. If you say that we put on events and we make fun videos and we help inform people about issues, you may get more creative, more motivated people who see that as a direct route to uh, participation, as opposed to going and sitting down and listening to us, you know, argue amongst our, each other. So please send me your ideas about things that are going on that you think you could turn into a short uh, visual story, and we will start working on that in Youth and Outreach. We talked about a bunch of other stuff, um, but we'll leave that for another time. Um, every time I look over here, I have to reset my slide. Uh, we have, now we are at planning and land use. Do we have a report? Well, Diana's on vacation. No, okie dokie. Oh, she's there. I oh. know she's there. Give her a break. Well, then let's just go to community issues. Dan, what do you got for me? We didn't have a meeting because it was right up against the police uh, event it. at Peck Park. Understood. If, well, that's an And of course, if Diana wants to speak, she should, of course. Uh, and I do see a hand raised, so let me go to. Ms. Navy at the floor. Yeah, thank you. No, I just have one very brief thing to say. And that is our next meeting of planning and land use is this Wednesday. And what we're going to be dealing with is um, our comments on the self storage uh, facility being proposed for Mayor Flores. So if you're interested in that, that's the meeting on Wednesday night, six o'clock. Thank you very much. Uh, environment and sustainability, Gwen Henry. So, um, uh, where the, the 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 main meeting on uh, July fourteenth, uh, once again with sustainability, uh, many of the the topics are actually discussed in the Joint Environment and Sustainability Committee, and uh, those those topics do span. And uh, we uh, we have in the past weighed in on uh, the environmental issues for the port. In that, most of the discussion is is with this unified committee. And then, and then we break out and we have our own. Uh, this, uh, we've already dealt with um, this special committee. There's nothing much, it's just that one topic. Um, my concern with the Joint Sustainability Committee is that there's not a written report and I will, I, I will be going back to this, the, the, the last report and actually create a written one for everyone. Um, the upcoming meeting, this is where Wait, the this isn't a report. This isn't a report. This no. is going on talking about things that haven't happened yet. Yeah, if, if we we need to, especially right now, we need to just stick to what's uh, what's well, in the well, package because well, 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 with Diana just mentioning what's happening in the upcoming agenda, the first topic uh, at hand, I'm hoping that the port committee uh, uh, members, the uh, the newly formed committee will at least be there for the first topic, which is uh, working on how to, uh, for the mission statement and for uh, the structure of it. And uh, Thomas will chair that and, and head that uh, particular topic. 
and uh, we'll we'll proceed from there. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, got a so, hand up in attendees. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, you're uh, yeah, Mike's live. Go ahead. Oh, hands down. Um, no quote for me. Uh, elections and bylaws was under Ray. Does anyone have information on election bylaws? Do you have, you have information on election and bylaws? Okay. Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, Pat, did you have anything on election and bylaws? No, I was calling Diana to see if she did. Oh. If she was oh. there. <clears throat> she disappeared. Do you have anything on election and bylaws? She says no. Okay, thanks very much. Uh, Vic, anything on uh, Christensen Science Center at Huck? Nothing new this month. Thanks very much. And Melanie, anything on Hank? Nope, no meeting. Okay, and uh, Dan, anything from LADWP besides the bill? Uh, working on it. Okay, and I can say that there's nothing to report from Public Works. Are there any announcements or comment on future agenda items? Hearing none. And any additional general public comments on non agenda items? Uh, go ahead. Move we adjourn. Uh, well, uh, I actually wanted to mention a meeting that's coming up. Go ahead. On Wednesday, uh, Joe Buscaino is going to have a, uh, there's, uh, it's out there uh, to have a working group that will be meeting at Peck Park on Wednesday. Um, uh, I, I suppose I can uh, share that with Chris or Christina, get it on there, but uh, I believe that we should uh, show up at some kind of representation, even as stakeholders. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, just a copy, uh, Christina and myself. On that. Um, all right. And that is it. Our next meeting will be Monday, September 12th, 2022, 6 p.m. Thank you very much. Uh, we ran over, obviously, but we did get some work done, and I appreciate everybody's time, energy, and patience and your contribution. Like David Semperio said, we don't always have to agree. If we work together, it, it's worth it for me. Uh, sorry, Craig. We're, this meeting is, is adjourned. I, I, that's what I was saying, move to adjourn. Yeah, I so, understood. I, I mean, you just say second that I, you know. I yeah, the, there's actually, I did not uh, recognize or entertain that motion. Anyway, thank you all very much. This meeting is adjourned if there are no- Thanks, adjourns. everybody. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night.